Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Sins and Consequences, a Blades in the Dark actual play podcast presented by Dragon's Greek Gaming. Uh, this week we're down a player. Ethan has disappeared off of the face of the earth. I have concerns, <laughs> but... I Who's Ethan? Yeah, exactly. Uh, he was eaten by that whale from RE0, the enemy. That makes you oh, forget God. that people exist. <laughs> what? I didn't see that. That's okay. You don't watch anime There's- yet. That's true. There's a whale that makes people forget you exist when it eats you. It, it no, it eats like the it eats the concept of your existence, and so you cease to exist. In a Resident Evil thing. Um, no, no. I they were it's, 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 the series is called Re Zero. Oh, I thought it was like Resident Evil Zero. I'm like that had like leeches in it. Okay. Oh, the, the, Never the mind. marine no, also knows a whale that that makes people and in, in, in concept, uh, be, you know, no longer exist. Yeah, and, 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 and leech and leeches. Hmm. Um. But yeah. Um. But we do have some other players here. But before we talk to them, let's forego introducing them in order to talk about Sydney Fable, um, who wrote the music that you're currently listening to. They also have a glam rock band known as the Blam Blams. Um. I was looking at uh, the art that Nightland was so kind to do for us. Uh, for this show and I just wanted to uh, once again plug um, her and Dan's uh, podcast what the die exclamation point nation point question mark um, which is um, an awesome uh, Pathfinder uh, podcast and they are actually playing in Shadowrun for their newest season which I think is dropping now it's active and let me let me point something out here here's an interesting thing it's called Nintero Bang the exclamation point and question mark together it's called Nintero Bang Natero Bang. Not Natero, Intero Bang. Intero Bang? You know what that reminds Intero me? Bang. Hamtaro. No. You guys remember Hamtaro? I do. Hamtaro. I thought you said Nitaro like from Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> no. My best friend. Exactly. Exactly. He's just he's just a hamster living life, you know? And he's like the opposite of anything from Mortal Kombat. Um but equally <laughs> Um, uh, speaking of being deadly, um, CJ, how's it going? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> going okay. Nice. Nice. I got a question for you, uh, from yes. Irie. Uh, so Irie. Like, you can talk about your week or whatever, but, um, does, <laughs> is Irie a fan of sports? sports? I didn't realize Duskfall had organized sports. Oh, yeah. They have, um, they have an annual competition known as the Macrover. Uh, macabre, sorry, the macabre, um, which is a sports, which is a sports game where uh, people have two hours uh, to be the last person holding on to a ball. Um, it takes over the entirety of the docks. Um, there's also it, it can be it, it's whatever you need to do to be the last one holding that ball. <laughs> you know what? I don't. Yeah. I don't think she's interested in it. <laughs> <laughs> she's a, she's, a, book, she's a book sniffer. They're not books. She doesn't care. That's fair. That's fair. I guess I just wanted an excuse to talk about sports. In this <laughs> fictional. Fictional or otherwise. Yes. Um, but yeah, no. Um, what is my like what is Mary into besides books? What's her favorite thing? Does she like flowers? Okay. Again, Too it's bad. like this, this isn't a world I expected flowers to exist in. <laughs> they're dead, but they're there. They're dead, but they're there. <laughs> nice petrified flower in amber um i mean given her upbringing it's hard for her to know like what she likes because it's always been like you have to completely focus on your studies so it's like there wasn't much of a room for her to have like personality and preferences it's like like, go to school, do your work, kind of that's, thing. So that's true. I, I did make your dad a dick, and so <laughs> oh, that's right. Your dad is an asshole. That's <laughs> now I'm starting to think how would how would Flora be affected without the sun? Uh, like the the sun is really, really, like a lot honest, of mushrooms. Like yeah. like well yeah, but like the, the, the also the pigmentation for a lot of things that would like it also affects like the visual aspect yeah. of everything. Everything would be washed out. Yeah, there there oh, are um. Dumb. One of the reasons why the yellow robe is so uh, noteworthy is because it's one of the few cases of things being yellow in the world. Oh, okay. So, like, 
that that it, the, the color in itself is the oddity yeah yeah that that is why it's yellow like is uh uh that would be almost impossible outside of arubia um but yes excuse me don't die on us man need you a lot to play the game that's true. Yeah, that's, that's, um, that's that's the only reason. But yeah, um, yeah. Anything uh, interesting or exciting going on this week before I move on? Um, uh, I'm just I'm just really happy to have finished that dragon. Yeah, yeah. There <laughs> I was you working go. on oh, the yeah. the new art for Dragon's Good Gaming. Y'all eventually will see it either before or after this episode airs. Glad to be done with it. I'm, I'm, happy with how, I'm happy with how it came out, but it's like, okay, I can do things with my life again. <laughs> it came out good. Mm-hmm. I like it. Yes, it does look quite nice. Um, speaking of looking nice, Theo, what's up? How's life? It's uh, it's going well. Um, I uh, just came back from a company picnic where I was playing soccer and apparently everyone there made a small child cry like at the same time like on purpose like that seems like kind of uh, well, it was kind of everybody was too competitive and nobody passed you the ball what oh. company do you work for that's making small children cry what kind of business uh, are you in is it the misery business like that yes. song yes that absolutely song. okay that's a great song by the way everybody check out the song misery business it's great <laughs> paramore fantastic classic small plug always good uh, <laughs> uh paramore please sponsor us yeah yeah, per- yeah paramore. <laughs> Cause i don't think they need the plug i think they're pretty doing pretty good without us <laughs> Shh, let them plug us oh, come on come on come on you know what? Plug us. <laughs> this is the first time in years i've heard someone talk about paramore so maybe they do need good. some. You, know. you know what that's true yeah but yeah um albatross what is albatross's like favorite genre of music Paramore. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> but okay, metal, answer. but not like the like not like our version of metal. It's just uh, people banging pots and pans. <laughs> it's just like, like the sounds of metal. There you go. Just I, grinding, I mean, that grinding is kind of banging. what industrial was when it first started. It was just mm-hmm. like people like beating the shit out of metal things. But but for like a serious answer, it, it'd be like uh, how to put like very folkloric like uh, drums and and like flutes kind of music. Uh, something that they would have played like around the fire okay okay yeah i kind of like that i like that yeah you know that's fair um what about lechusa is lechusa kind of the same vibe or or is he kind of more into like some spooky piano music stuff with gang vocals um theremins he he himself would have been the food player oh okay okay there you go. Lechusa does seem like a flute player. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but he plays the flute. Flutist. Flute. 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 Goddamn wind instrument players. It, it is flute. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it, they could just be flutists, but they're not. Uh, and that, that's a shot at my little sister. Sorry. she's She is, in fact, a flute player. Nice. And so did you do anything besides make a small child cry this week? Uh, I, I, started, <laughs> I started playing the new Legend of Zelda. Where you actually what those, play a Zelda? Absolutely. No oh, I didn't know that came out yet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I got like the last copy that they had. Apparently, like uh, apparently, like uh, GameStops uh, are getting their orders late again. That's so, true. so it's just one of those. Uh, I had to, to go ahead and rush to get it, but I've been having fun with it. Like it's the first one where you're not playing as Link. Uh, like Zelda's the main character. Oh. And and um, uh, like it, should call it Legend of Link instead. <laughs> like because it's a it's a yeah the, absolutely fair is fair <laughs> but but as in terms of like a 2d zelda game it it feels it feels open world like there's no like you know how when you play Link's awakening like you have the loading screens in between mm-hmm. with this one you don't like you're able to uh just because of the the mechanic itself where where you can grab everyday objects like from the like the like like you can get a bed and use it to stack on top of each other for you to be able to solve puzzles and uh it, it almost feels like if you were playing minecraft just setting things up to be able to go over the hill um and you also get a horse in a 2d result the game which i think only four stores adventures did it, but, but like it's a blast i'm having fun with it like it feels different for a legend of zelda convention of a game but mm-hmm. i like the direction it's going and nice. i get my dungeons back so i'm happy about that too nice nice uh speaking of the dungeons adam How's life? Hi, I'm in a dungeon. 
Oh no. Yeah, but how's your week going? How's your how's your week been? I haven't talked to you in a while. You were yeah, it's been a bit. It's been a bit. It's been a hot minute, man. I uh, in the intervening time, I got into a car crash. That sucked. That was a good morning on my way into work. Ooh. Um, can't recommend it. Don't get into car crashes. Um, I'm fine. The car's a little fucked up. But, you know that's okay. Is it is um, it your uh, your hatchback? Well, I mean, yes, both are hatchbacks. So it was oh. the newer one. It was the Subaru. Uh, uh, but they, uh, you know, they're fixing it up. I should be getting it back uh, end of the week coming up here. Um, so, yeah, I got a car crash. That sucked. Um, I'm fine. The other guy's fine. Uh, he's like, the light was red. I'm like, dude, if the light was red, that means that you blew a red light and crashed into me. Um, oh, well, we'll see what happens. I'll see you in court. Um, <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, we did that. Uh, oh, I went to Mexico. Did I talk about that yet? I don't know. No, have we played since I went on vacation. We have not. Or you, well, no. Oh, I went to have. Mexico. It was cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, they got this thing down there. It's um, warm weather. That's pretty cool. And uh, I went to a resort. Man, it was like uh, one of those things where you can drink as much as you feel like drinking. So I drank a lot. And uh, you know, we went. Uh, Went down near the beach. I saw a giant sea turtle uh, at <clears throat> night. Yeah, dude, like you're you're not supposed to like interact with them, you know, because they, you know, they're uh, uh, not in a great place, uh, you know. Uh, I was gonna say financially, but that's not right. Like, uh, <laughs> I mean, they're probably. all broke as shit. No, the turtles the are sea getting turtles into the are, stock market, right? They're yeah. like, uh, they're not like but, endangered, but they're like threatened, threatened, too or much whatever money it is. Into Dogecoin. Yeah. That, well, yeah, that's their problem. They keep buying crypto, and everybody knows that's just a giant Ponzi scheme. But um, yeah, they're like threatened or something like that. Whatever, whatever the step before endangered is. So you're not supposed to like fuck with them. And I, I wasn't intending to fuck with them. We were just, you know, my wife and I were going for a nice night beach stroll, and um, you know, I see this big thing in the water, and I'm like, what the fuck is it? And my wife's like, don't get close to it. It might be a dead animal. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and she's like, it might be like a dead seal or something. And I'm like, that's not here. And she's like. If it's a dead seal, whatever killed it might not be far behind. And I'm like, I don't think sharks come up on the beach. And I'm like, I think it's a big, I, I thought it was a big ass tire that came off with something because I'm, you know, an idiot. And uh, so I pull out my phone, I hit it with the, with the flashlight and I'm like, what the fuck is that? It's just like this big old black thing. I don't know. And then like, you know, the, the wave comes up and it washes out and it comes up and it washes out and it comes up and then this thing turns around. And like it's looking at me and I'm like four feet away from this thing and it's got this giant ass turtle face and it's just like and his mouth is open I was like oh, it's a big fucking sea turtle like this thing was huge I would guess it was like 30 feet wide but it's probably in all reality like like at least like four feet like it was big it was a big motherfucker and it like walked up on the beach with its face at me and my wife was like don't shine the flashlight at it you're not supposed to do that and i'm like okay and she's like you're not supposed to take pictures i'm like i really want to take a picture she's like you're not supposed to take pictures so i didn't take a picture and then we walked away because you're supposed to get away from them that's fair i mean like you, it is good to give them space and everything but like i feel like they're not good at social situations or, or um well, like if you or if you spook them fish. they'll go back in the water and lay their eggs in the water and then they just fucking die Oh. So like you're not supposed to yeah you're not supposed to spook them when they go out to you know uh, drop their eggs on the beach. No, oh. no, that makes sense. That does make sense. Yeah. Um, I have. So a I hope I didn't spook it too much. No, oh, I hope so. I am um, speaking of spooking. Um, Ludes. Um, what's Ludes' favorite petty crime to commit? Oh man, um, he is a huge fan of free food. So I guess I think it still counts as shoplifting if you're snatching food, um, but that. There we go. Everyone in Agrabah would think so. Yeah, it, it, is it? I, I I heard this a long time ago, and I don't know if it's true. If it's either true or it's somehow racist, um, but I've heard. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> buckle up! Here we go. Oh, hold on. We're in the danger zone, baby. I heard that the origin <laughs> of the term shoplifting is because of those like um, those market um, vendor stalls that used to be transportable and used to be able to lift the whole shop. And oh, I have it. no idea. That could be true or racist. Definitely. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Sure is out. Um, I have no clue. But like, he's like a big fan of like, oh, what the hell is that? And then he snatches like a hot dog off the thing, and then and then boogies away, you know. But he moves away in a casual way, where it seems like nothing happened. But you know, the one person saw like, that guy just stole three hot dogs, and he's like, gap, 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 and they're gone. Like that one. I don't know if you guys have seen these videos of this woman on um, on the internet. Did she like 
takes like a hot dog, it's just like, and then it's gone. Yeah, that's that's how you do hot dog eating competitions. Yeah, dude, it's, it's, she does it. She does it, and then she sticks out her tongue and winks. You know, um, and sometimes she does it dressed up like Wonder Woman. You guys know who I'm talking about? Have you seen this? No, it sounds like porn, is. dude. It sounds. It's like- not. Por- <laughs> it's totally not porn. It's totally not porn. It sounds like porn, and like it's it's, it's porn adjacent. Also, she's like I've seen her do it with like uh, she's got like these like. I don't know. They look like they're like two foot long gummy worms, and she's like, and like it all just like goes uh-huh. down into her mouth, and then she like does the thing. She sticks out her tongue and winks, and then she'll like and like pull it back out. Oh uh, man, it's crazy. Oh. Yeah, dude, that's yeah. Cool. Is it? <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> oh shit! I, I, I think you're on <laughs> a porn awkward. site, Adam. Oh my god. I've I've been. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you porn at work. I guess. It's like, is that <laughs> where I watch the Coney Island hot dog eating contest? That's porn. Coney too. Island hot dog eating contest sounds like a porn. It sounds like a euphemism. <laughs> that sounds like uh, when somebody's trying to sell you drugs without mentioning drugs so they don't get caught by the cops. They're like, oh yeah, you want some Coney Island hot dog eating contest? It's, it's, like, it, wait, hell wait, yeah, I want heroin. That's an all American you know? event. Like, I don't know. They yeah, have it every year. Well, I think I they know. had it every year. I don't know. I just told you I don't know. <laughs> you know what they have every year is Palatine Street Fest in Palatine. What's Palatine? It's okay. It's a place for bad people in Adam. Yeah. <laughs> it's a place where it's a place where you can crash your car on the way into work at five in the morning. Talking to me. Um that happened to me when I used to work at a quarry. Um I was driving at like six AM past this house, and every single day this lady just had these two small dogs and they were never on a leash, and I'd be driving oh and they would just run out into the road and I'd slow down. And the one day the dog tried so hard to get under my tire every day and one day it's finally succeeded oh no and uh, yeah i so i hit this dog and then i stop and i get out and i'm like do you want me to take it to the vet and she's like no i bought this house and now i can't afford to take my dog to the vet and i'm like well then you should have got it on a fucking leash like yeah what the hell well that's why that's why she walks it out there is because the dog was sick Um, she was trying to get somebody else to do it without feeling the guilt well, no, there was like it's it would fucked. just like leave her porch and run at my car every morning, and I'm like, oh God. like I'm like, you're gonna, I'm gonna hit this dog one day, and then I did, um, and I don't feel good about, uh, it, but it's not my no, fault. I, I, I uh, on this topic, I'm gonna, I've got two things about, oh, excuse me, about this topic. First one, one time I was driving and I hit a bird. It was flying, and it exploded when my car hit it. I was very upset. That's that's that whole story. That's the whole thing. Second thing. At the end of my block, there's this family. Second to last house. And this family's got like a gaggle of kids. I don't know, six, six kids maybe. And they play in the street all the time. Like one of them's always playing hockey out on the street with a net out there, skating around. And like, I go and I'm getting close and I slow down because it's like, hey, there's a kid in the street. And the kid goes, let's go, and yells at me like, dude, I'm going to fucking run you over next time. Like, don't sass me. Get the hell out of the street when I'm trying to drive. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I see these kids out there all the time, and I'm I'm trying not to hit them all the time. They're playing basketball and rolling the ball out into the street, and I'm like, you're trying to die. And, like, dude, I see the parents, and the parents walking in the goddamn street. It's like, dude, we've got sidewalks. Get on the goddamn sidewalk. There's no reason for you to be in the street. And they're walking in the street, and they walk their dog without a leash. And the dog runs up and harasses my neighbor's dog. My neighbor's dog is this giant out of control dog that will eat you. And their little dog goes running up to him. And, uh, you know, hey. she's like, why isn't your dog on the leash? And they're all like, well, he's usually pretty good. It's like, my dog isn't, you know, Yeah. you don't know, put your dog on a damn leash. Yeah, no. I, I, even when my one dog, he was like the most behaved dog ever who fall around is like, I always kept him on a leash because you yeah. never know what's going to happen. Yeah, you don't know what the what the other dog is gonna do. You don't. Yep, you can know your dog like your own dog. Your yeah. neighbor's dog might be a lunatic. That's fair. Get In my neighborhood, um, we have the lunatic dogs. Um, they're just very small. They exhibit a lot of small dog energy, and they hmm, yes. neighbor kids. Um, but yeah, no, um, we're 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 the uh, we're we're the awful family that walk in the middle of the road. Except I don't walk in the middle of the road. But um, I do let my dogs out without a leash. But we live in the country, and like no one's really around, so that's why I can. Oh, do- I live in a neighborhood filled with houses and cars, and other people and dogs. Yeah, no. Um, some of my neighbors do have dogs, and will happen to be walking by, or like 
will be outside, but then I just call the dogs back and they usually come or I have to go out and get them. But there's like, oh, yeah. I'm, there's a fair amount of time. So nothing bad has happened yet. We've been doing this for years, so I'm excited. Um, nice. Yeah. Um, I guess I'll introduce myself. My name is Aaron, also known as Poultry Geist. I'm going to burp. There we go. <laughs> um, Howard, you should have done it on the mic. I, I was trying to do that. <laughs> um, But yeah, no. Um, what have I got going on this week? My wife is sick. She's very oh. ill, diseased even. Um, but, oh, no. but she's radiant and she can hear me right now. Um, <laughs> um, I noticed no. you're not in the basement thing anymore, whatever that was where you had the ladder. Um, no, I'm in, I'm in my living room right now. Uh, okay. I'm doing. But uh, yeah, no, I. Um, she's very sick and so I've been looking after her, waiting for my turn to get sick as uh, those things tend to go. Did you uh, the Rona? Pardon? She got the Rona? No, I don't think so. Um, okay. We're we're gonna we'll be we've we've tested, but it, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, no. Um, I'm hoping it's not the Rona because I've I would have already gotten that once and it was brutal. Uh, oh yeah. But yeah, other than that, what else did I get up to? Oh, I've been think- taking some time and I've been thinking about Banksy, and I realized that because no one knows who Banksy is, I could be Banksy. And not know. Uh, I think you would know. I think you would know if you were. I, I don't, don't think, think I would know. Like, cause like if no one knows, that means Banksy doesn't know, right? So like a, a good point. Point. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe it's like that thing where like any one of us could be Gary Oldman at any minute and have no clue. <laughs> That's yeah. exactly it. And you know, like Gary he talks about like really high up, right? You've been Gary Oldman for years. Yeah. What? Well, well, like Banksy, he puts things really high up, so he's got to be like super tall. So like that's like even more evidence it could be me. So I think yeah. I might be Banksy and not know it. Is what I'm trying to say. I think I might be the Zodiac Killer. That's that's too bad. That's unfortunate. You should do something. All right, Ted Cruz. Is the Zodiac Killer? What's the deal with that? Because I I actually don't know anything about it. I refuse to watch the movie and I refuse to read the news. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it was like it was a very long time ago, so I am far too young to. I was not alive when that was happening. Yeah, uh, I was born. I think over a decade after that happened. Um, but it was like a serial killer. You know, you would just like go to like plays where there were like kids making out in cars, you know, and they'd like smoke them with a gun. And, uh, you know, he's just running around just blasting people. And I say he, like I know, I would just assume it's a dude because like, you know, most of the time women don't just run around and blast people. You know, if a woman's going to be a serial killer, she's killing people that she knows. You know, it's, uh, it's not just like random acts of violence. I'm not a profiler, but I've it's watched a bunch of TV. <laughs> it's probably a white guy. It's got to be a white guy. It's a white guy, probably with glasses. Just saying. Anyhow, uh, he would kill all these people for, for basically no reason. They were, like, not connected. They were never able to find him. And the dude would, like, do, like, magazine clipping things and send them in to the, the newspaper and the radio and stuff like that. And, like, they had, like, a cipher. And uh, when somebody finally figured out the cipher, because they had, like a, like, a write-in contest on the radio... <laughs> basically the guy was like I'm gonna keep killing people until you find out who I am because I'm smarter than you and they never found him and then they stopped or died or oh. moved on who knows yeah maybe he's in a different country doing it just got bored. but from my understanding Ted Cruz was the was the zodiac killer like the the sign why mm-hmm that's fair. People do say that from time to time, which is actually the only reason I know anything about the Zodiac Killer is because Ted Cruz is a Zodiac Killer. Um, yeah. Actually, do you remember when Ted Cruz did that thing where he posted like a link to a porno? On no. Twitter? <laughs> no, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot yeah he just like hit, he hit share and then he went to Twitter and was like, I'm going to share this video on Twitter. And it just came up for like 25 minutes. It was just like, yeah. <laughs> Whoops. What oh, I'm sorry, the Zodiac talking. Killer was in the 60s and 70s. Okay. So, so I am definitely not the Zodiac Killer. Ancient history. Like, no one from that time is even alive. No one. No one. Exactly. Not at all. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, let's start playing some Blades in the Dark. All right. Sure. Um, well, last, if not last week, a couple weeks ago here, guys, um, we had the first half of our score um Myrie and Drillbit 
um, formulated a plan in order to secure the Book of Rituals and um, information guide to how to do magics that uh, Edwin Smith, the curator of the Ministry of Pres Preservation, or the museum within the Ministry of Preservation anyways, um, they need to secure this book in order to find out how to perform the ritual um, that they would need in order to literally transport an entire building from one part of the city to another. Um, we have decided that the um, museum is most likely going to be uh, finding itself um, beside like that, the, that pool that you guys have. There's multiple doors. Some of those doors lead to collapsed buildings <laughs> or collapsed rooms. Um, you've decided that you're just going to move um, the museum to one of those rooms, one of those spaces. Um, and so you'll have nice clean access underneath the city. Uh, and we'll have a museum. It's fantastic. We yeah. win. Exactly. We'll be like the like the British. <laughs> Except yeah. we teleported it uh, <laughs> over to our space. I saw a fun thing that said like, "Hey, how come? Uh, why are there pyramids in Egypt?" And the answer is because they're too big to move to the British Museum. I feel like we made that joke last <laughs> you, time. You did make I, that exact joke last I'm time. I'm gonna make that joke all the time. Yeah, you gotta make that joke even when it doesn't make sense to make that joke. That's I will. Yeah, do it. Um, I'm good. Yes, uh, they successfully Just managed watch. to do that. They had a run-in um, with a strange man who they eventually did identify himself as the assistant curator of the Ministry of Preservation. Um, someone that they had been given some information on, um, though the information seems to be a bit outdated. Um, as he has slipped into some kind of madness, um, it seems. Um, but he is uh, clearly a uh, potentially a serial killer. Um, certainly not Ooh. very good company. Um, and um, has uh, created all of White Crown in the form of intricate dollhouses and um, housed them with dolls that he's made of his own design. Um, and uh, That's a little weird. Yeah. Um, Myrie and Drillbit, when they when they found Edwin Smith's room in search of this book of magics, um, unwittingly unleashed Edwina into the world um, the way that they came, <laughs> and she ran into the um, uh, the uh, the assistant curator. Um, and uh, Drillbit actually stepped up and saved her. While well, Myrie made the decision, perhaps wiser, perhaps more callous, uh, to uh, just simply scamper away. Wait, 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 wait. So this this weirdo with the dolls almost killed Edwina? Yes. Yes. Oh. Yeah. And Myrie she would... just fucked off? Yeah. Yeah. Her conscience wasn't there. It's Lucy. cold. It's cold. Well, I need to understand. She was on a time limit. I, yes. you know what? Yeah, there was only I, so long. Ludes probably doesn't, I guess, I'm guessing Ludes doesn't know about this. So, you know. Good. Don't don't tell him. He'll be he'll be sad. Yeah, it's fine. But he'll do uh, drugs about it. He lived in the end. It's fine. He'll do drugs about it. <laughs> yeah. Do drugs. About Someone it. saved her. She's it. fine. <laughs> um, but yes, also um, we um, Myrie was only even able to uh, to do this uh, daring caper thanks to the lack of knowledge about sexual education um, that is rampant across the nobility. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, what? <laughs> what did you just say? What? Um, so the, the nobility are unaware um, of what a period is. Um, oh God. I <laughs> this thing. Um, Women do what? Yeah, exactly. That's where they go in for like three days a week. <laughs> Disgusting. Yeah. Um, um, Hutchins, your your um, your close friend and confidant there, Myri. Um, I acknowledge that um, he um, just thought it was perfectly normal for his wife to disappear for three days, about every 28 days or so. <laughs> they, just, <laughs> they go shopping, right? That's what it is. That is just go to, we just go to the to the woman's room in the basement. Is, <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that how it... I'm sorry, This is the, we're going to get into this real quick here. Is that how it works in this society? Is there, they're like, um, what's the word, sequestered? For the that duration, there's no like feminine hygiene products. It's like, go hide. Um. Yes. Uh. For the nobility. Oh, um, oh for the nobility. 
Yeah. The poor people. The poor people bleed everywhere. The poor people equipment? free bleed and they no one cares. You know, that's <laughs> free bleed. Okay. <laughs> brutal. Apparently, it's brutal. It's right. to do it. Yeah, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it is the healthiest, <laughs> but like, it's also sloppy. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I don't have to deal with it, so I have no <laughs> opinion on it exactly. Other than go. um, having to sequester somebody feels a little bit fucked up. Unless the unless the the woman's room is like really lavish. You know, what if it's what if it's like a no Bill so probably. What if, what if it's like, like a little wait, vacation? Yeah, to be honest, like that's you probably know? their favorite three days of the month. Right, like it's mm-hmm. like you got to deal with the whole process, but meanwhile, it's filled up with snacks and it's very comfortable, and you just get to kick back and watch your favorite show on streaming networks. You don't have to hang out with your kids. You don't have to look at your husband. You don't have to do shit. <laughs> you got no responsibilities other than just taking it easy that sounds that sounds like that might be nice but at the same time uh i've seen women that get their period and are like please kill me so you know uh somewhere in between somewhere in between um but uh yes um we did uh we did do the rolls already um you can see here that they rolled the number of the beast i've um, got three sixes on a five oh, i see it um he um so he got a critical success on his um rook's gambit attune roll which is why it's a concert roll um in order to perform the ritual um now the ritual we went through and did the math um incoming tuve is 15 stress but we also took a special ability um if we look at the soul seekers crew sheet there should be um a new special ability there uh, called, oh, it's not on there, um, but it is the Ritual Sacrifice Special Ability. Um, meaning that um, when you perform a ritual for every um, human sacrifice that is made as part of that ritual, you receive three less stress on go, um, incoming. Oh, we got that one. Okay, cool. Yeah, which means that in theory, if you killed five people as part of this ritual, he receives zero stress. Um, the answer is take out five people. No. <laughs> Yeah, but um, um, Ve has said that um, it would be great if you could kill at least one person. Otherwise, that's, that's a that's a fun conversation. You yeah. know, it'd just be nice. It, 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 do me <laughs> a favor really do and me kill solid, at least right? one. Yeah. yeah. yeah Al- Albatross is like, uh, who do you need me to kill? Yeah. Exactly. Albatross I'm like, just like, yeah, we got I'll Albatross in this in this round. I'm just like, yeah. someone's gonna die uh, this time. It's. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Albatross I was planning on killing people anyway. Yeah. Um. It is. It was noted actually. Um. During the thing due to a role this is again due to a role um that the the there is a mandatory um at least one person does have to be sacrificed as part of this ritual because of the nature of the initial ritual which was that there had to be a sacrifice for every single war placed um initially my guys i rolled bad (laughs) which means that um if you were to do the math lutes you've actually seen it um there's over 200 of these wards inside the museum so, so you're saying that they got killed 200 people? No, no, they killed 200 people. They did. To put the wards in the museum. Oh, they did. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah, you only uh, so, one. Uh, we don't, I'm not gonna feel bad. They killed 200 people. I kill one. Yeah. That doesn't make it right. All right. I'm sorry. We'll save that for the <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes. Uh, so at this point in time, we are gonna start the score in earnest. All of last week's score was a setup act. <laughs> Um, so right, just, 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 just immediately start thinking like Ernest performs human sacrifice is the name of the movie. <laughs> it's like Ernest scared stupid part two. Yep, there you go. Um, but yes, oh yeah, I forgot about that one. Um, now you got me thinking about Ernest, Adam. What the hell? Um, oh, yeah. no, but hey, um, <laughs> okay. So um, we need to um start this in earnest uh what i want to do is make another engagement role um based on what we've learned now what we have now and see how things have changed while um you guys will um have to venture inside of the ministry of preservation museum once again in order to um mark um to make some changes to the wards and to have um some sort of beacon or um 
location for them to target with this spell that um, they is um, in car- is bringing into the world over in the jail. So we have to basically place like um like an anchor in this place. Yeah, not an anchor, but like the opposite, like um like a it's the opposite of an anchor. The thing it's that they a, use in a, Metal Gear Solid. Uh, those balloons. Um, the balloons. I, I feel the like an extraction system. Yeah, you have the Fulton extract this. Oh, from five. Uh, five or Peace Walker. Peace Walker was rad. Mm-hmm. Um, so keep in mind your item loadouts. Um, you should probably pick those now while you think of it. And then we're going to go right into the engagement role. Um, so for this part of it, um, well, actually, the, we have the general plan, which is a cult or supernatural. And we have the arcane method. So that I think we're good there. Um, you guys just have to get into the Ministry of Preservation, perform some part of this ritual. Um, you will also need to um, end at least one person's life. Um, and we will very quickly check in with Jacob Bridgewater after this engagement. Ooh, okay. Um, should uh, I want to roll it? I don't think I've ever done the engagement roll. Okay, well, let's get engaged, Adam. Um, uh, I'm taking. All right, so what, uh, how many dice do we got? Well, we, let's let's figure it out. Is yeah, this operation this. particular bold and daring? Yes. Yeah, Take one so. die. Is it nice. overly complex or contingent on many factors? Not for Absolutely. this. Absolutely. Okay, fine. Because this is. You got two things to do, and you're good at both of those things. I don't feel like That's I should. That's fair. But I guess I guess the the whole thing is contingent on this. Yes. Yes. But we already give you the minus one D for the last engagement roll. Okay. Uh, does the plan's detail expose the vulnerability to target hit them where they're weakest? This does one... expose the vulnerability. Yep. But also, is the target strongest against this approach or they have particular defenses or survival special preparations? Yes. Yes. Um, the, it, yeah. Otherwise, people will be robbing the museum every day of the week. Um, can any of your friends or contacts provide aid or insight for this operation? Um... We certainly have access to some very uh, knowledgeable people in the form of Salia, the information broker. Uh, Frank might be able to help you um, figure out how to open certain locks. Um, I don't know if um, if Lechusa has any friends that might be able to help, uh, though Lechusa is currently uh, scattered amongst the winds currently. Uh, he'll be returning next session. Um, are there any enemies or rivals interfering in the operation? It's a bit of a wash. Um, I feel like um, <laughs> that dramatic music for us just hit exactly when you said <laughs> it's a bit of a wash. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know, like there's the assistant curator. How do you guys feel about him? Well, that depends, right? Because um, he's a no. That's part tool. of the. That's part of it. That's part of it. It's not like a third party. That's true. Mm. Um, there is. Well, I guess he's not a third party either. Um, yeah. You know what? I won't give it to you. I won't give it to you. So right now, we're at plus one. We're at um, a wash. Another plus one, because I'm sure you could rely on your friends if you needed to. Are there any other elements you want to consider? Uh, yes. I'm going to give you minus 1D, because this is significantly higher to your target. So this is... Um, a, fair. That's still two dice. Because you start with one for luck. Oh, nice. Okay. So okay. go ahead and make an engagement roll with two die there, Adam. All right, let's go. Oh, my oh. God. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Snake eyes. What the fuck? Okay. Oh, um, no. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. All right, so I that is my one engagement roll for this whole thing fucking game i will never roll that again (laughs) (laughs) oh no oh no um so we are going to start in a desperate situation adam do you want to volunteer one of your characters to be the first to make an action uh let's talk about what what the plan is just uh set set one of your characters up in the fiction oh my god all right so what are we what exactly are we trying to do here we're trying to get in there to to basically uh modify the ward to make it so it's like a anti-ward essentially yeah well no i think what you're trying to do is basically like like kind of what Ludes did that one time he turned himself into a beacon 
uh, in the okay. ghost world. You're trying to like modify these wards in some way uh, so that they are easier to see, so that the person who's actually performing the ritual across the city has a target. Because okay. otherwise, they're just going to take like a large section of White Crown. Gotcha. Okay. So we're kind of trying to define the boundaries of what's getting snatched. Yes. Okay. Oh, boy. Um, Man, so we're going to kick this off in a desperate situation. And that's probably because uh, going in to... Because we need to be on site to do this stuff. So, I mean, who all is going in there? Um, I mean, Ludes right. is going in for sure. Myri's probably got to go in for... Myri's got to be there. Myri's got to be there to do the ghost ward thing. Like, that's that's the whole... The linchpin of all of it. You're absolutely essential. Albatross is definitely going in. Albatross is going in. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't think Marv would be involved in this aspect of it. And that's okay. If anything, you if can anything always... like Marv would be like waiting close by. Wait, well, he doesn't have a cell phone, so he wouldn't be able to receive a call. You can hang uh, yes. in the car. In... You can hang in the goat cart. Yeah, he's in the car, uh, waiting for the phone call. This doesn't work. Yeah, he's on the goats, and he's petting them and giving them oats. Oats for goats. That's what, uh, not loots, uh, what Marv is up to. <laughs> okay. He's like, I like you guys. You guys are funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're screaming real loud. I think you want some more oats. Here you go. Yeah, oh, you bit me, you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> that's cute, though. Um, so that's what's going on with Marv. That's why it's a desperate situation. Marv's getting mauled by goats. Uh, uh, so, <laughs> no, it's going to be lewds. Um Oh, my God. So we're trying to get in there, and it's... I'm guessing we're going to go probably in the night when there's less people, but security is probably well, a little bit tighter, is my assumption. Night. So... Mm. That's perfectly appropriate. Uh, whatever the <laughs> downtime is of nighttime, you know, when people are less active. Uh, I don't know if that exists, um, but whatever that is. The, the lull and trying to get in there discreetly. That's when he fucks things up. Okay. So what's going to happen is Ludes is going to make his... Uh, I guess, I mean, am I, am I just making actions happen, or am I just describing the setup? You just want to describe where you are, what you're trying to do, and then I'm going to make it desperate for you. So just worry about okay. where you are and what you're trying to do. Um, He's trying to get in to the other side to unlock the doors to let everybody else in, because there's like a barrier on the inside uh, that you can't unlock from the outside, from the direction that we're headed. So he's going okay. to try to phase through and get into it to unlock. Okay. So all for free, you guys manage to um, to either uh, put on costumes and make your way over to White Crown, um, or you're like hidden in the cart um, outside the ministry there. Um, excuse me, sorry. Um, but we, you guys, are, so you guys have managed to get inside of the perimeter of the ministry. Um, Lutz, as you uh, you kind of like you phase through the wall, you said that you can do that before with your special ability. Yeah. So you enter into the ghost field and um, it, it's it's kind of one of those things where you like a hop, skip and a jump, like quite literally, uh, you have to move upwards and like climb a ladder in order to go th across the wall um, because of the way that the ghost song is not quite the, um, literal. Um, but you've, you're familiar enough with it. You get to the other side, you open it up, uh, and you pop back into the reality to begin to pick the lock. And as you're picking the lock, um, a guard rounds the corner and he says, Hey, what are you doing? And he draws a pistol. Okay. Now we're desperate. I really want to quickly point out that while Mars is outside feeding the goats, uh, I don't think the goats have been named yet. Oh, I named them Polly. Vincent Van Goat. Oh, I was just say Vincent Van Goat and Billy the Kid. All right. I was going to name them Polly and Shore. Oof. Yikes. Mine are hilarious. You guys are rubes. So, okay, we're in there. And, uh... <clears throat> 
Shit, so let's determine our loads. Lude's load is always light. Okay. Easy peasy. Marv is outside in case he's needed. Uh, pack and heat. He's heavy. Nice. How much else would be light? Okay. Mary's medium. There we medium. go. Okay. Um, and, and Myri, I'm assuming you're kind of standing on the other side of this back entrance. Um, yeah. You know, look furtively looking over your shoulder to make sure that patrols haven't come by. You found a window um, where you can go in. Um, however, the patrols inside have changed as a result of uh, recent incidences inside of the Ministry of Preservation. Um, oh so um, you were expecting to have a short window here where you'd be able to open the door even on the inside. Um, however, a patrol, um, a single guard, um, though armed and wearing armor, um, has appeared. He's seen you. He's drawn a pistol. Uh, can I roll prowl? Um, to sneak up. Well, he's inside and we're outside. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the other yeah. side of a wall, my dude. Oh, you're on the other side? Oh, never mind, never mind, never mind. Yeah, yeah. You've so sneaked through that wall. To get inside the Ministry of Preservation without a direct invitation is is itself like an incredibly difficult feat. Um, which is the first obstacle that you guys have come up across. Um, but yes, we do see that um, um, uh. at this point in time. Doesn't mean that you can't um, help in some way, but um, I have my I have my spirit animal with me, and it has the same ability that Ludes has. Fair enough. Um, I'm going to send my hawk to go in there to help. It has uh, two abilities: it has arrow shift, arrow swift, and ghost form. Arrow shift. <laughs> I thought it had nine believing ghost form. Or was it mine? Let me see. Actually, I think I wrote it down. Right. Oh no, it is mine. Linking ghost form, um, but it can still technically attack. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I- I'm gonna go ahead and I'm uh, go in there. Like, if anything, it would have been following behind Ludes. Um, so I commanded to attack. I'm gonna use uh, skirmish. Okay. Um, yeah, just roll using. Um albatross's stats however because it is a hawk and this is like an armored guard it's going to be for um it's going to be desperate for limited effect well there goes that all right let's kick it off with violence <laughs> that albatross is here um so you successfully did it now um i was going to ask if you wanted to push yourself at all or anything like that to um, uh raise these things or to make it like a to mid to like to to go from limited to standard effect. Oh no, man! <laughs> it's okay yes. if you don't want to. I'm just I, I'm going to offer it to you. So this will have a limited effect. Um, honestly, it, just so the guy doesn't die immediately and just gives him an advantage. Sure, I'll keep it at limited. That's fair. Um, okay, so, um, Ludes, um, yeah, you've um, as you were traveling on the ghost field, there's this kind of hawk kind of circling around you on the ghost field um you um you uh, appear on the material plane the hawk is not there with you um as you're about to like start picking this lock um the guard as we said before he can rounds the corner he levels a pistol at you and um he shouts hey what are you doing um and in that as moment Lutz goes to try to convince the guy that everything's cool that's when the hawk pops out yeah uh, so you go to turn to, to start uh, uh, making up some kind of lie, and all of a sudden this hawk appears and just starts like scratching and um, and like pecking at him. Um, the man, um, harried by this bird, um, kind of freaks out, and the pistol um, he um, he pulls it aside, and he's he's doing that. He's trying to like swat the bird out of the out of the air, um, and because it's for limited effect, he does manage to create some space between him and the bird. Um, and then he levels the pistol at the bird. Okay. This completely changed what I was going to do. I'm going to try to quickly open the door. Instead of trying to convince this guy that everything's cool. Because, like... Uh, you know what? No. I got it. I'm going to try to sway the guy. I'm going to... Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to tell him. 
You gotta look out. There's all these ghosts coming around. That's why I'm here. I'm trying to help. Um, I, not uh, good, but we're gonna go for it. The go yeah, Ghostbusters um, baby. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna still Something say that this is desperate for limited effect. Um, the stakes have changed. He's, he's all right, and I'm gonna big. push for standard. Okay. Um, do, do, do. Is anyone going to assist? Um, you, for one, it, it would be two um, points of stress to assist. It would be three if you're not in the in the scene with him. I'll uh, I'll assist. Currently, am assisting. <laughs> okay, the bird is able to assist by um, kind of phasing in and out of the material plane. We'll say. Um, to appear extra ghostly. We're gonna try to convince him I'm here to catch the bird. Okay. Um, so, I was sent by uh, you know the the head office to try to catch this ghost bird. That's why I'm here. Here we go. Oh, oh I got six, it. baby. You got mm -hmm. it. Um, and he turns and he's like, yeah, okay, okay. Uh, I, no one tells me anything. Um. Oh, yeah, do you want me to, can I shoot the bird? Like, I don't understand what's going on. No, 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 no. You got to preserve the bird. That's the whole point of this place. We're trying to preserve things. Come on. You going to shoot him? Get out of here. Get out of here, crazy kid. So are you trying to tell me to leave? No, I'm trying to tell you to get out of here. You know, not like, like, you know, leave, but like, you know, get out of here. Uh, look, uh, uh, help me open this door so we can get this bird out of here. And then we'll preserve it later. Um, hmm. Um, sorry, why do you need the door open? To get the bird out of here. It's, it, you see, it's gonna poop all over all the stuff. You know, we got all these important, uh, you know, uh, things that you're ministering. Yeah. Okay. Um, hmm. It's funny because it's like Ooh, you go, you yeah, got the yeah, success. I want to reward you, but that's also like the worst lie ever. And to try to kind of add to it, the bird starts to pretend to attack Ludes. Get out of here! Get out of here! No, I mean like actually get out of here. <laughs> and, and now it goes back to the other guy and starts trying to like annoy him. Um, he's like, you know what? Whatever. You you, you have keys. I'm assuming. Um, you can just let the bird out if that's what you want to do. I'm I'm going on my patrols. Um, I don't want to see you when I get back here. Um, I'm gonna check hey, you. I don't want to see you either. How's that sound? It's rude. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and he uh, begins. Um, he kind of pushes the bird aside and kind of scampers down the hallway. He um, holsters his. <laughs> he skips. <laughs> it, it, it's it's it scrawls right. at him. <laughs> I said scampers, but <laughs> but yes, uh, he uh, scampers down the hallway. He holsters his pistol. He looks back and gives you like a look of disdain. Uh, before rounding the corner, I give and him uh, the the old double thumbs up. And because I have mind link with a bird, and because I have mind link with a bird, the bird's like this with its wingspan, just like what? <laughs> just like, come at me, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> oh my god! All right, all right. Uh, so you you have um you have created a window um here where you can open the door. Um. Okay. Now, because you have the special ability, that means that, like, tier does not impact uh, your ability. Um, I'm still going to have you make a roll uh, to open this door because this is a tier okay. five lock. Now, um, what that means is that this is going to take some time. Even though you're skilled enough to do it, it's a matter of how quickly you can open this door. Mm. Um, but we're going to move to risk. Okay, so I've yeah. got find lockpicks and the infiltrator class ability so it's still uh still gonna be was risky standard or is this uh it, um it's gonna be risky standard but you're gonna give yourself an okay. additional die for the find lock lockpicks okay Ooh, oh. wow i'm glad i got that extra die it's Ooh. that's a four and then three ones i um, should not be rolling dice tonight i don't know what's going on <laughs> That's fair. Um, a complication occurs, which is that as the man rounds the corner, he thinks about what you said. How, how and stupid it hurts. <laughs> and, and he's like, <laughs> I, I'm just going to quickly check in. Um, he said he talked to the people in the office, but which office? Um, I guess I'll just check in with the, with the patrol captain. 
Uh, make sure that this oh, is... No. And um, I will create a clock here in uh, just a moment. Um, where is... Where are... How do I create characters again? Oh, right there. Um, yeah, I'm going to create a clock called uh, Patrolman. That's M-E-N, because there's more than one. And we're going to set it at six. And we're going to tick one. And we're over a cruise sheet. Where's Patrolman? There it is. Bam. All right. Uh, but the door does open. Um, Myri and Albatross, as you um, as the door opens, you see Lute's um, um, handsome face. <laughs> Where's that? Uh, he goes, hey, you gotta be quiet in here. There's a bunch of guards. One of them already saw me. There's, I don't know what the hell's going on. I thought it was going to be... Saw you. She I don't know. Just, just, just be quiet. Be quiet. Both of you be quiet. Quiet. Both of you be quiet. You be quiet, too. Everybody be quiet. I'll try to look at the bird and tell it to move forward so I can actually start scouting out. No, don't set the bird out. Don't set the bird out. That bird's the problem in the first place. It's in the ghost field. Loons will move forward, And then he's ignoring both of them and just moving forward. Um, yes, and as the as the three of you um begin walking down this hall, um, so you're outside of the actual museum right now, which is closed currently. But the Ministry of Preservation is a building itself much, much larger than the actual museum. So um, the museum itself would be probably like a three-story tall building, um, like over like 180 feet wide and long. Um, it's like this huge um, place of like opulence and, and decoration and um, a monument to um, inquiry and um, history. Um, within, but then the building itself around you is also gargantuan. And, um, as you're walking down like these plush, uh, red carpets, um, you see candelabra on the wall, um, paintings of various leaders and members of the Ministry of Preservation throughout the days of yore. Um, you, uh, make your way over to where the actual museum is. You've now entered into the Ministry of Preservation. And you're making your way to the museum. And I want to take a moment and I want to cut away to Jacob Bridgewater. Oh. Uh, Jacob Bridgewater, I I messaged you this a little while ago there, Adam. Um, yeah, it, was, it was a little while ago. A couple weeks. A couple two tree. Yeah. And... Um, that though that you um we last saw Jacob Bridgewater was actually looking upon the Ministry of Preservation. He reached into the pocket of one of his ropes and he pulled out um, a pinky and a thumb right out of his pocket. Um, it wasn't there before. He chose not to react <laughs> really strongly. Um, and as he jumps off the building, um, later when he's got a moment, um, he actually takes a look and like it's almost like. Um, carved into like the necrotic, like the dead flesh of these fingers. Um, you see a message, and the message says, "Envy creates monsters of us all. Fantasies turn wicked. Fantasies turn wicked. Whimsy turns to obsession. Inside a sanctuary to opulence, a man acts in disregard to our interests." Find him and teach him a lesson. Okay. Um, he eats the fingers. Okay, he yeah. eats the fingers. No, no, no. Like, no you didn't have to do that. I, don't know, ever... like, I gotta dispose of the message. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've ever played like, the first fable, but. Um, I have. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite things to do on evil playthroughs was just to have like into, like hundreds of like baby chicks crunchy chick and just eat them. Yeah. And it's just like that crunching noise, and you get like one HP back for everyone you eat. Mm -hmm. But you also gave but you one get like evil points. points. Just yeah. one evil point. I remember was doing like that in front of one of those demon doors. Like I ate like a stack of them, so the demon door would open up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, but yeah, uh, so you don't eat the fingers, but um, presumably you either keep them or throw them away. But uh, this probably, me- probably pocket them again. Yeah. yeah. What does this message mean to Jacob? Man, just like every message he receives, it's it's something for him to meditate on and try to understand. And it's basically when when he sees stuff like this, uh, it's something that that rides in the back of his mind, and he looks at everything and thinks, "How does this apply to these messages? These messages are important, and this everything's got to fit in there somehow. How does this fit in?" This place of opulence, that's uh, only one place I know of. It's like that. And the fact that I'm already staking it out when this message came through, lets me know I'm on the right trail. Sanctuary. But uh, opulence, mine says appliance. I'm like, like refrigerators? Um, Listen, sanctuary. I type like an old man. My thumbs yeah, up. Yeah, I know. And, and we've already <laughs> gone over the fact that you just send it, which I fucking love. Uh, he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, he doesn't say that. He goes, Sanctuary to Opulence. That's definitely this place I'm already staking out. So, seems I'm on the right trail. Maybe these fingers try to teach me something. Yeah. Envy. Fantasies, whimsy. I think it's in there. I'm gonna get in there. Do what I was here to do. And I'm gonna find whoever this is in there. Acting in disregard to my interests. Find him. I will teach him. There we go. Um, why don't we have um, Jacob Bridgewater make a gather information roll to see what he can learn about some of the people inside. Yeah, man. Um, how do you do that? I've, I haven't done that in a long time. Um, so it is a, an action roll um, okay. with a question in mind. So you're going to ask me a question um, okay. about what information you'd like to gather. Um, in this case, I'm assuming it's like, who am I looking for? Um, yeah, I mean, and, that's basically it. Who is who is this man? Yeah. Um, and, and I'm going to attune to do it. Okay. He's collected a, a decent amount of ghost jars, and he's going to crack one open. And uh, basically either interrogate it, excuse me, or send it in there to find out. Uh, so you compel this spirit to go inside and retrieve information for you. Um, and I'll even take it a step further. Um, you have, um, if you if you are so inclined to think that you could have this ability, as you send the spirit in, it's almost like you're riding in with it, like so you can see through its eyes. Oh, red! I love it. Um, so as you move, um you are, are are passing through um you um you do notice that the museum itself um as it moves through the ghost field is just not there oh uh, like that that weird skip that we have in there yeah uh so you okay. do see that um however you um you head up towards where like the the living quarters are and you find that there's like this corridor in behind and there's like this sense of like um like kind of remnants of like the emotional experiences that people have there. There's echoes. a lot of yeah, echoes of like experiences. And so you see like a lot of people like laughing and skittering, um, sneaking. Um okay. like so there's like a combination of guilt and thrill, um, lust. Um and then there's just this area that emanates like an aura of like both shame and um malice shame and malice yeah and as the spirit kind of moves over there um you see like a tableau you see a tableau of like a of like a middle-aged woman um laying on the ground bleeding from her calf um there's a man um standing in front of like a series of doll houses 
um, you see um, Drillbit, um, who you may not have met before, but you see this no, large metallic man um, actually attack the woman. And then carry, like, but he knocks her unconscious. He doesn't kill her and picks her up. He has an, a brief exchange. You can't hear the words yeah. um, because this spirit does not speak this language. Um, he is a Probably seven. just sounds like voices underwater or something. Yeah. Um, but um, you, you, you see that this, um, this large metallic man has a conversation with this other man who looks both terrified and um, um, like he looks like he is trying his best to appear in control in this okay. moment, though he was clearly caught doing something um, untoward. Okay. Um, and then the, the large metal man moves. And um, as you follow this other man um, out, the, you have the spirit follow the man. Yeah. And as he um, he returns back to his quarters, which you see are upturned as if someone had thrown a tantrum in here, uh, broken glass on the floor and the bed upturned. Um, he sighs and he just sits in a chair and weeps. Um, okay. Kind of pulling at his hair out of stress. Okay. That's my guy. That's your guy. Yeah, um, we'll just let Adam sit on that information, and we'll check in with Myrie and with uh, with Albatross. Um, you guys are walking with Lutes uh, towards the the museum. Do you guys have a plan on how you're going to get inside? Um, Vey has also mentioned that someone will need to be sacrificed as part of this. Um, do you guys have a plan for that? Do we all know that, or like, is it like a is it in proprietary information that someone's got to get sacrificed? Does everyone know? Um, everyone I, it's part of the ritual. So like you, yeah. like that was something you discovered, um, mm -hmm. not they. Um, okay. Uh, is that like because of the nature of the the way the words were cast initially, um, that that there is going to have to be at least one um, person killed as a result of this in order mm -hmm. for it to work. Okay. And we'll say that you know that it needs to happen inside the museum while the spell is being cast. Okay. So she would have let Albatross know that. She she knows that guy's down to murder people. Uh, I think Lutz has mm -hmm. been a little iffy about murdering. Yeah. But she probably didn't tell him. Too nice of a guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's a wimp. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um... Hmm. I mean, if there's gonna be guards, I mean, there's gonna be guards, the, so we got our pay of the litter. <laughs> yeah, that, that is our fodder. Mm. Um, I'm sorry. I'm just like trying to. Well, well, there's the back, the back uh, pathways. We could go in one of those again, and that. Can... So it's like the museum is in the bigger building. Is that how it is? Um. Yeah. So if you like, so before, like when you went into the museum washroom. And then you found like the switch and like moved in through the mirror. You had to like travel like quite a distance in these like dark corridors in behind to get from there to the living quarters. Okay. Um, so they're on the same floor, um, but they're like quite a distance away. Um, like it was like a good like 20 minutes of walking. Okay. Um, um, so yeah, like they're the corridors do all kind of connect different parts of the building. Um, okay. but, uh, yeah, like even right now, like you're like a good, like five minutes walk away from like the entrance to the museum itself. Um, well, I mean, I think going in the, in those back hallways is just a good idea in general. So we're not walking around out in the open. Okay. Um, so yeah, um, you you have the blueprint so you would know where to locate like an entrance to one of these um give me a roll to see if you can find one of them and the mechanism in which to reveal the secret door okay. study or survey they're both the same for me okay now you pick 
They both have two pips. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I, I don't care which. Um, both. Yeah, so. Doing survey. Yeah. Um. So, controlled standard or risk. Uh, this is going to be risky for standard because you, you have to do it within a timely manner. Because okay. The are going. Um, I don't want to push it yet. Okay. No worries. Uh, so go ahead and give me that roll. Uh, I didn't need to push it. I got that six. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, um, Myri, you're just looking and you're like, yep, there it is. Um, you're, you're kind of looking at the notes and you look over at uh, one of these candelabra um, the is not lit and you're like it can't be that obvious and you pull it and like the 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 entire wall just kind of lifts up like a like a garage. oh my god it was that obvious yeah uh, you step inside um, you pull like a lever on the other side and it closes behind you um, just a moment later we see two guardsmen uh, kind of cross paths right where you were standing um, but you are in these back rooms. Um, yeah. Um, you guys tell me where you're going. What, what, what you're, uh, what you're planning on doing now. You kind of have free reign of these back areas. Um, unless something changes, uh, you guys can probably get to anywhere you need to be within the ministry without being seen. So, just just to be sure here, we have to one sacrifice one person for this uh, teleportation to the museum, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and we have to get into the museum first. Yeah, you the, the sacrifice to, itself also needs to take place within the museum mm-hmm. um, at the time of casting. So, like a murder, like as we're casting, it, or. Is- can it, there be delay on death to, to casting? Um, I mean, I mean, like realistically, it can look any way you want it to. But like, I kind of imagine that it's like one of those things where you've set up this ward, this beacon, and then to like really make sure that like it's not they who needs to see it; it's like the spell itself. Mm-hmm. Um, so in order for the spell itself to see where it needs to go, um, like a freshly like murdered. Like, you basically have to, like, murder someone in the room as Vey is casting the spell. Which, as okay. we... We've already made the roll for that, and we know that it's going to succeed. Um, We just need to know that we're taking the right area. So, okay. the only part that can fail at this point is that he's going to take, like, an entirely different building. Mm. Okay. So options are we can just go straight to the museum and then we'll have to because whatever we do is like once we get to the museum it's like I'm gonna have to set up the ward but there's a chance of someone walking in which is either a good or bad thing they don't know how many guards are gonna be there um we could go find a volunteer ahead of time and drag them with us into the the museum and that's what, or... I, and that's what I was considering just just getting a, an unlucky soul and just capturing them and I'm uh, going from there. Um, or we just wait for one of them to show up while we're doing it and then we capture them then because like the, someone's going to walk waltz in. It's we would rather one come to us or do we want to take our pick of one? That's that's fair. That's where I'm at. Yeah. Like we could leave, like like I said I'm all for killing Mr. Assistant guy. He's not the coolest dude. Um mm. So if we wanted to go find him and snatch him up, that's one option. Otherwise, it's one very unlucky guard. Yeah, who probably has I, a wife and kids. Yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> does Albatross like literally not care if the person that they kill is innocent? Hmm. Oof. Does he find it? Not care. Hmm. Because well, th- like there's two people who know that this is part of the ritual. I don't think they've yeah. told us. Is what you said, right? Yeah. So Ludes is is in for a bit of a surprise. Oh, I'd say let's get let's get the asshole who uh, isn't so cool. Okay. Yeah, 
It's like, I, I, cause like, if I he think has a all, choice. The, all the murder that Myri's caused, it's been kind of like on the sidelines. Like, like I didn't intend to kill you. You just happened to be there. This is like, oh, we gotta deliberately kill someone. Let's take it an asshole at least. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's go on a let's go on a little trip. Yeah. So are are you guys splitting up? Um, or are you going together? Is this like a teen kidnapping? Or are you guys covering like sending Albatross to go get your man while you guys set up? Oh, I like that. Um Yeah. I and then I could slide point. you I could slide you like um like a syringe of like sleep it, it, stuff, so you could just stab sleep, of, like like stab him with some sleep juice. Oh my god, you guys are awful! All right. <laughs> and and uh, I'll give you my bird. <gasps> oh, yep. Uh, so yeah, you guys are able to, like, you're kind of able to see and and have eyes on them. Um, and you uh you get this syringe of uh, I forget what it's called, sleep essence, slumber essence. You get a vial of slumber essence in a, in the form of a syringe. Though um, I believe you also have an upgrade to your arm that allows you to inject those things directly, right? Uh, we rolled that. It, I just have an extra vial now. Yeah, yeah. You, well, hers would be more potent than the one that you had from before. Ooh. Would I would I be able to replace the canister in the arm? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can certainly do that. Um, okay. Uh, so this is where you guys part ways. Myri and Lutz, uh go. You're in the back um, um, corridors, like these kind of secret corridors um, that the that the foundation have installed um, for the purposes of um, escorting people who um, may not normally be welcome um, inside. Um, so you kind of have free reign of where you need to go. Um, in at least until you actually get to these more open spaces. Uh, most people do not know about the existence of these corridors. So, uh, Ludes and Myri, uh, you make your way over to the museum, I presume? Yeah, so we'll go through, and I'm guessing we've got, um, like, a map of this thing or something. So, uh, <clears throat> let's see, does documents take up a slot in my stuff? It doesn't, great. Ludes got the docs. It does take up a slot. Luge does not have the docks. Yeah. You uh, you deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> I got medium, so I'll take care of that. Okay, those. perfect. That's great. So, you know, you're looking over the map, and he's like, okay, we got to go this way. We're going to go through. And that uh, we can move through. You got to be real quiet in here. So we're going to go through. When you get to the position, you know, there's, a, there's an area we need to get in. You're going to set up your ward. Or you're going to alter the ward. I don't know how that shit works, but, uh, you know, maybe I can help you out. Yeah. But uh, we gotta do it quiet. I no think what you're. I think what you need to do is lock any doors into the room so that we can keep anyone from getting in and disturbing us. I suppose I could do that. You know, I've, never, I've never done it that way. I've always done it the opposite where I unlock them. But I could probably lock them. If you could do it, you could redo it. Yeah, I think I just do it backwards. It makes perfect sense. Okay, so we'll go do that. Now, uh, it's uh, you know, gotta be quiet. No more silly bird stuff. Let's go. Yeah. Um and um the he's silly pointing at the bird, he's like he's like, no more silly bird stuff. Right, the bird bird's just like It's an audio format, so it's just just just, just, <laughs> just it, it just it just kinda like goes at your like it just kinda like checks you, it just kinda like Tears just like that. Okay, sorry. Like, like, it, 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 sorry, sorry. So what it's gonna be doing is that like the bird's just gonna look at Ludes and just kinda like Peck his head forward aggressively, okay. uh, just trying to to like like to check lose and be like, do something about it. <laughs> Look, little bird, I will strangle. It. Nah, I'm not gonna do that. Just stop it. Just stop it. <laughs> be cool for once. I'm not once gonna do anything, but like bird life. Be cool. <laughs> um, and so um, Ludes and this bird are, are kind of quiet, whisper arguing as they um, walk down these dark corridors. Um. You got those like large stone tiles. Um, it's cold back here, um, a little bit damp, even. Um, unlike last time when Myri was wearing her high heels as she walked down here, there's no clanging as you guys walk. It's much quieter. Um, I got Albert my dark side goggles. Yep. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, so you can see pretty clearly um, that there are no lights back here. Like though there there seems to be braziers every so often that just aren't currently lit. So I'll I'll guide. And I'll be able to look at the map and consult and stuff like that. But uh, I just want I want the listeners to think about that part of Silence of the Lambs with the night vision goggles is basically the perspective. So it's just like every once in a while I look back and I'm looking at her like when he's looking at Clarice and you see him like reach out and almost touch her face. It's like that. Oh. Hides to yourself. No, no, I don't. I never touch you. So you have no clue what happened. Oh. But the listeners know. The listeners okay. know. And smell your head. Yeah, that's fair. Why does it smell like Cheetos? What are you, a dog? <laughs> what? Oh, oh yeah. Like yeah, my dog, not my dog's yeah. feet do smell like Fritos for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Top um, of my dog, my dog's in the top of his head always smells like turkey. Oh, that's always nice. That's kind of nice. Yeah, yeah. It makes me makes me hungry. Nice. But uh, all right, so. Um and so yeah, you um the the three of you make your way down towards the museum. I want to check in with Albatross. I want to we want to follow Albatross for a moment. Um, my, you would have discussed this before, um, the, the living quarters where this may or may, or may not be located is, um, is a little, is probably about 20 minutes, uh, walking, um, the opposite direction of where they're heading. This place is big. Mm. Uh, there's no trick to getting there. It just takes some time. Um, so you are, are you going to their living quarters to find them? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, so we um, we kind of cut forward to um, you're walking, and as you start walking, you walk down this um, these series of um, like you walk down this hallway, and there's a series of like two way mirrors. So it's like a window into the bedrooms of all of these people. And so you look and you see like several people sleeping, um, like couples and single people, uh, just lying, resting, unawares in their bed, um, until you get to one room in particular. Um, it's on your right hand side, and as you look through, the, this is the one that you would know is where you need to be. And you look inside, and the room has been torn up. Um, it looks like, uh, someone has, like, thrown either a tantrum or someone broke in. Uh, the bed's actually, like, thrown up aside and there's broken glass on the floor. Though it doesn't look like anything was taken. Um, you know that in order to step into the room, you would need to pull on the, the brazier to the right of the, of the window. Okay. But... Is there a window in the room? Um, so you know that you are looking, you are in these like back, like um, unknown or secret hallways, and you are actually looking through a quote unquote window, which is actually a two way mirror. So that would be like the mirror that they use as their vanity. Yeah. But. I'm saying like, um, um, oh, no, no, this is like, like the your room. So like there's, there's four walls. Um, no windows, and then there's a door on the other side. Kind of like a hotel room, but not one that's like by a window. Mm. I'm trying to think what he want to do, because uh, it would be because he's not great at study, but he would want he'd be hunting him down. Um. Okay. Um, so yeah, you, um, that's, a hunt. that's like for following a person. Yeah. Yeah. So you can, um, yeah, you can step in, um, you, um, step into the room. We'll just say you step into the room. Um, it's empty currently. No one can see in, uh, so you're pretty safe to do so. You step into the room and you see, um, that like, you can kind of like using your hunt skills without even making a roll. You can see that someone has come in here um, a few times since this has happened and just walked over the glass and not bothered to clean up. Um, and that there's like a single chair that's set up, um, just like kind of like a wooden, um, like mahogany chair. Um, and Ooh, that um, someone um, touched the side of the chair and um, got a little bit of fresh blood on it. 
Okay. And then I'll have you make a hunt roll to see if you can track this person where they've gone. Um, you touch the blood and it is still wet. Fresh. Let's see. Uh, what would it be for position and effect? Um, I'm going to say that it is risky uh, for standard effect. All right, let's see. It's a partial success. Five. Are you okay if I introduce Jacob Bridgewater as a complication? Absolutely. Also, I want to point out real quick. Mahogany mm. can be carcinogenic. That's okay. So, bad news for whatever bloody person was touching it. But well, that, that's the thing. That Why do you think so many of Edwin's friends have cancer? <laughs> wow <laughs> it all connects um there you go so yeah you you get a partial success which means you do succeed and so yeah you see um like every so often there's a couple drops of blood on like the door frame that they're like he puts like a hand there um you you um you see him walk into like the main hallway and he moves down um you you do track him um it takes you a while um going this way and as you kind of come to where he is you see him um sitting in the commode um which is like so like there's like a like a like a larger like shared washroom on this floor um with several stalls and so he's gone to the washroom um, and just as you kind of enter into the room, um, you see that you've actually been beaten there by none other than Jacob Bridgewater. Ooh. I mean, he's immediately going to speak into the waters. Jacob, what I don't remember. Is he? Is he on there? No, you've explicitly said that Jacob would not consume it. Yeah. Oh, he did not consume it? Oh. Yeah. He's not in the group chat. Yeah. yeah. So you're going to have to... This player is not in the group chat. Um... I mean, just purely out of curiosity, uh, but also to inform everyone else. Everyone. Jacob is here. He seems uh, like he's found a target. Jacob aware of uh, Albatross? Yeah, you've been before. The, and no, I mean, like, guys, is he like aware he's here? Uh, you, um, hmm. I don't think you knew he was going to be here today. Um, oh, but I mean, like, is he currently aware that he's here? Yes, yeah. You, you, you like, you're waiting outside of this washroom. Um, yeah. We can roll back, which is. Do you, like, you are here to find this guy. This is the night you chose to strike, if that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're, sure. you're here to teach him his lesson. And uh, Albatross walks into the room. So we're outside of the bathroom? Uh, you're in, like, the actual washroom. He's in the stall. He's in a stall, okay. And, and um, he is not aware that either of you are here. Okay. I mean, what are you doing here? We're here to snag the guy. We're going to put him to sleep and then sacrifice him. Sacrifice him? What? It's out of the plan. What plan? You. What are you doing here? Why are you Careful. always here? Every time, every time I'm about to finish my job, it's always you. Does this keep happening? Is this the circle? Always feeding back in on itself. Inning the end, it's always the same. Hmm. 
You're here for the same man. Maybe it's you acting against my interest. I, I don't know what your interests are. We just need to put him to sleep and take him for the sacrifice so we can mute the museum and get the third artifact. Can't let you take this man. My own reasons to be here. And I can't have you interrupting that. I've told you before. That I don't like you. One sec. What? You put me on. He speaks into the he, 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 he <laughs> speaks into the lines. Do we really need this man? Jacob is being insistent that he doesn't want to give him up, and I really don't give a shit. Why does he want him? I don't know. Who did you talking? ask? What's going on? Why, what? What? Well, Jacob? I, I, oh, I remember that guy. What's he doing? I don't he's here. Know. He, he's being insistent that I'm in his way and that I'm always in his way and that he wants this man for himself. Honestly, he can have him for all I give a shit. Why do we? What do we need a man for? What are we doing? Uh. Is this we guy need him the for keys the, or something? We, I, it, mean, he, I can get in he, wherever he, we need. He, he's important for the plan, Ludes. Don't worry about the details. Well, I'm, I'm worried. I'm worried about the details. I need to know the details. What we, you got, I got, I'm sorry. I got to be quiet in here. I'm worried about the details. I don't have the details. I thought I had the details. I thought we made the details. What am I doing without details? What, what is the details? details? Did you ask him what he's doing there? What does he want with that guy? Fine. You know what, this guy? And he turns why, back what to Jacob. What's going on? Why, why are we doing things with that? Yeah. He's sorry. done. <laughs> <laughs> Mary's, asking, Mary's asking why you're here. He looks around. He's like, "What the hell are you talking about? You're seeing things. You must be losing your mind." And Sometimes I wish the two I was. Of us? And, and then he and, and then he looks at the man in the bathroom. He's like, "Do, do you want him? Honestly, like, you can have him. I'm losing time here. We need to go. If you don't, if you're gonna make I this think, into a bigger deal, I'm just gonna go." No, I think you've made this into a bigger deal. You keep coming in my life every time. Every time I'm about to finish up what I'm working on, you just stroll right in. I think you're working against my I don't think he's even the right man. I think it's you. It's you. How firmly do you believe in what you're doing? How important is this to you? These plans you have. That's none of your concern. Oh, that's plenty of my concern. You willing to die for these plans? You put your life on the line for them? Are you willing to find out? I'm asking you. In that... He's going to speak into the waters before his next action. Um... Hey, Lutz. You might have to find someone else. Find what? What are we trying to find? It seems like Jacob wants to have a bit of a conversation. No, get out of there. Get out of there, and but just find someone else. Then it doesn't matter. What? What? Does get it, out what of. Is, get out of there. And hurry up. What? We can't keep arguing like this in these walls. They're gonna hear us. They're gonna hear us in the walls. We're in the fucking walls. You gotta be quiet when you're in the walls. <laughs> I'll be there soon. Answer the question. You think you're willing to die for this? Is this worth your life to you? These plans you have. And with that, Albatross is immediately going to open the bathroom stall and fucking book it. With the guy or without the guy? Yeah, with the guy inside, yes. He's going to open the bathroom stall with the guy inside, and then he's going to book it. Okay. This dude's in here taking a poop, and you're gonna kick the door yes, open. Yes, yes, no, away. yeah, but, but he's no, gonna, he's I see gonna do vision. it in a way. I see the he's yeah. gonna do it in a way where he's not seen. He's and he's gonna be like, like just they're both having. I imagine both of them are having a conversation in front of this talk, correct? I, I was thinking they were probably closer to the exit to the bathroom. Yeah, than right I mean, yeah, sure, 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 sure. Yeah. Uh, 
It, yeah, what, what he's you know what? Do Even then. better. The two of them have stepped into one of the other stalls and closed the door, and they're having this conversation really close together. Like, <laughs> I, I don't think close. Albatross would let that happen. Oh, but it's funny. All right, fine. <laughs> he, he would want to keep his distance from him. So, yeah, he's definitely going to be I like... I want Albatross to taste his breath. Or... <laughs> Because he's in he's in a disguise. It's like chick peanut butter for lunch. He's gonna open right, the stall and be like, "Sir, you need to go. There's a man here to kill you. You need to just go now." I'll take that as a yes. Um. Okay. And, and then he just fucking books it. Okay, so I'm gonna have you make an action roll to convince this man that he needs to to follow your lead. And so, oh, dude, he doesn't care if he follows his lead. Honestly. He could do well, whatever I, the fuck he I wants think, I think what he's trying to do is just, like, like, alert the guy that something's going on to ruin Jacob's plans of, like, catching this guy and, off guard. And, and it's not particularly to ruin Jacob's plan. It's for him to leave him the fuck alone so he can actually go do what he needs to do. Okay. Um. So you. So the door flies open. You see this man. He's sitting there. He's actually fully clothed. Um, And, like, he's not actually using the Sitting on the stall? <laughs> He's, he's just sitting. He's not on sitting the, on the toilet with his pants off like I do. No, he. But like he's okay. just sitting on the toilet, and he's got like kind of like his head in his hands, um, and he's got like a pair of leather dolls on his lap, and um. <laughs> what the fuck is he doing in there? <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. And then he just looks up, and he's like, "Um, sorry, what?" <laughs> That's when, at that exact moment, is when the lightning hook lashes around Albatross's neck. And we'll cut away from that scene. With what? the other fucking dolls that threw him off, yeah. <laughs> um, yes, and so yeah, there's the man with the leather dolls. He looks up, he looks startled and and, and confused, and then all of a sudden a lightning hook uh comes out towards uh Albatross. Um we will uh, just quickly before break check in with uh Myrie and Lutz as you um you kind of go in the way that you originally had entered uh you find that you are inside like the you go through your own mirror inside the the washrooms of the the museum and you step out um into like where the Tykerosi uh section is and um Lutz um might have seen this before but you haven't as you step in, you see like these like almost like um, offensive stereotypes of like every region okay. kind of laid out. Um, and so like in the Taikorosi wing where you're standing right now, it's like dark and ominous and mysterious and like um, and like there's like um, empty display cases everywhere with signs that talk about how excellently crafted these design cases are because the Tiger <laughs> are well known for, the <laughs> for making display cases. <laughs> yes. It's a display of display cases. <laughs> That's the most fucking postmodern thing I've ever heard. I love it. Oh my what? God. That's what it's art. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you're Check out this luxury <laughs> painting frame. Yes. It's frame on the wall it's oh like when you try to, to get the glass from a very specific floor. beach <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah but um and then you um you um you can hear it before you even see it just like the dull the dull thudding of a heart and as you guys step into the room oh, um myri you um you notice it too the the heartbeat quickens as if it's excited for you to be here and with all that being said, we will go on a short break here. Ladies and gentlemen, drink your RC Cola. Look at your display cases. Really take a moment <laughs> and regard the frames that you put your art in and take a note of how much almost better quality of art that that frame is than the art itself. <laughs> it's a beautiful thought. That is a beautiful thought. And we'll be right back in just a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Um, after a tense uh, standoff between Albatross and uh, Jacob Bridgewater, <clears throat> um, we we had a brief conversation just now off uh, off recording. 
um, or at least it won't make it into the edit. Um, <laughs> where, where, uh, yeah, like we uh, just want to make sure that uh, PvP is handled appropriately. And so, for the purposes of this, Jacob Bridgewater will be under my control with a little bit of um, editorial grace from um, uh, Adam, who, um, if I step out of line and do something out of character, he'll let me know. Um, but right. uh, yeah, for your GMs out there, if you ever have a question about how to handle something like that, sometimes it is okay to step in and just be like, I'm going to be the one who rolls to see if people start dying um, in a PvP situation where one of the characters has um, already ostracized themselves away from the party in many ways. Yeah, that's um, totally, totally cool. I'm totally cool with this. Yep. I have no complaints, no gripes. Yep. Anything can be handled with effective communication. Uh, speaking so... of effective communication, you should check out our streams every other Monday over at the Neon Swamp. <laughs> Um, the literally, um, in two days time from this recording. So before you guys will have a chance to hear this, um, we are going to be playing, um, weird frontiers, which is a, um, Ooh, cool. is like a weird Western, um, version of dungeon crawl classics. Um, oh, yeah. we're running a funnel. So I've got my four characters. Oh, yes, dude. You're gonna have so much fun. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm excited. It's my first funnel. I've played DCC a couple oh. times, but only as like a first or second level character, which is kind of like it's, that's. Oh my god, it's so much fun, dude! The funnel, the funnel is. I mean, it's fun. It's why it's in the name. Yeah, yeah. I heard you guys when I did the edit for the uh, Portal Under the Stars. Um, oh yeah. The game. Was was that run just using regular Dungeon Crawl Classics rules? Yep. 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 Fair, enough. Fair enough. I wasn't sure if there was like another version that's. Dungeon Crawl Classics, but in space, because I also have the book for Mutant. Well, yeah, there's a thing called Star Crawl. Oh, okay, fair enough. Yeah, that's a that's a thing. Have you ever played um, Portal Under the Stars? It's yes, um, we it's all? an it's an old school revival game as well, but it's like even I, more so I, than I, the, it's super dead. I think you're thinking of something else. What's what's it called? Um, there's so there's Portal Under the Stars, and then there's yeah. Um, another there's another one that's more like classic like D and D like fantasy trope stuff, where it's like you're talking you're, about old school essentials. No. no, no. What are you talking about? I'm call it's, it's it's called like I don't know like I I don't have the book in front of me, but I'll okay. I'll, I'll show it to you later. But I um I got a book called Neoclassical Geek Revival. Ooh, that it's is probably not that though. It's not that. No, it's called something under the stars, but um, Portal Under the Stars is like the sci-fi version of it, and it's really cool. Well, Portal, Portal. I think you're thinking of maybe Worlds Without Numbers. Yeah, the Worlds Without it's Numbers the is the is is the um is like the the old school revival like classic. Yeah. Like yeah, maybe. and then uh, Stars Without Numbers is the space one. Oh, what is Portal Under the Stars then? Portal Under the Stars is the Dungeon Crawl Classics module that I ran. That we were just talking about. Oh, fair enough. Okay, maybe yeah, that's why I was so confused. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, dude, I told you. I just told you we played that. Yeah. Okay. No, that makes sense. I just got the two confused then. Yeah. Stars. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have not played. I have worlds without numbers. Uh, I have not played it. Uh, they also made one called Cities Without Numbers, which is like a cyberpunk one that I'm super interested in. Hmm. Fair enough. Because I have specific yeah. tastes. Yeah, if you if you've ever thought that your game is uh is too gritty, um, or like that the rules are too confining, you just gotta play uh Worlds Without Numbers or uh, any of the other ones. Cause like yeah, it's like you walk in with like two HP, you are a wizard and you can cast one spell once per day. And it's like you know, and it's like and you can do nothing else. You spend the rest of the time just trying not to die and you're like a fifth level character. <laughs> Just stay out of the way. Yeah. yeah. Role playing, not dying. Well, even like the, even like like being a fighter, it's like there's like a forty percent chance you'll die anytime you get into an encounter. It's it's oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty brutal. Um, but it's fun. It is fun if you're okay with character death. It's fun. Um, speaking not of for CJ. Yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of characters dying, uh, let's return to our players. <laughs> Um, our okay. player characters. Um, Myri and Ludes just entered into the museum. You're inside the Tekarosi wing. You can see and you can hear the heart uh, beating. Um, 
you um you have is your... it like dead silent otherwise is that why we can hear it yeah yeah it is dead okay. silent otherwise but it's also quite loud um i don't oh. remember if i described it this way or not but it is also very it was like something you could even hear um when you came in on your regular tour there Myrie. Mm. um so Myrie first came in through here um she actually came with hutchins posing as his wife okay and they went on a tour and so yes part of the hard of Tar is that it sits in a cabinet and it just beats um, as you get a closer look at it, and Myra, you would have seen it last time, you notice it's not sitting on a pedestal, and it doesn't seem to be supported by anything. But it's just like floating? Yeah. Just hanging. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. Um, and it does pulse, and it does beat. Um, you have a moment here um, where you can take a look around. Um Ludes while Myri uh, sets up um, this ward, if you would like. I feel like Ludes is probably drawn to this thing, like hard. Okay. Like it, seeing it, he's just like, I need to have this thing. I no, no, I don't need to take it. I just, stay I just, focused. I'm trying to, I'm trying to stay focused, but this thing, it's talking to me. Can you hear it? It's it's very loud, dumping everywhere. Sin, come here, come here, come well, here. Don't, if you right, if you're hearing it, then come don't here. listen to it. It's a fucking disembodied heart. Don't listen to it. Sin, pick me up. Pick me up. Pick me up. Just go it's box him behind the head. Ow, shit. Okay, all right. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, I don't know what that's about. I don't know. I just, I just, I, okay. And we're in. You gotta do your thing. And I'll just, you know, I, it's, don't everything's lock the locked doors. up. Go. Cool. Yeah, I'll lock them up. I'll lock them up. Yeah, I mean, I don't know about that, but I, I'll lock them up, you know. I, uh, you know, I can fuck with the locks real good. I can make his little yes. locks aren't gonna yes. unlock, but then that's good. Do that then. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. Okay. Um, so we'll we'll check in with Myri while you're doing that. Um, we will. We'll, we'll, we'll make like a oh, finesse roll or something. Yes, there will be two. There will be multiple rolls, but I want Myri to make her roll as well. Okay. Uh, because Myri. Okay. You um you have your medium load, so I'm assuming you have everything you need to do this. Oh yeah, um, that, there's arcane implements. I'm gonna check that off. Yeah. Um. So, what you end up having to make? Do you know? Do you have an idea of what it's gonna look like? Uh, I'm imagining of like we're gonna have. How I see it is like. She has like this chalk kind of made out of that like salt stuff that we like mentioned before. Oh, the black salt. Yeah, that black salt. So it's like chalk made out of it, and she has like this is a big thing. So she's making like huge like lines around the floor, uh, like filling it in, just going around, having to do that. Yeah. Um, it's it, it's 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 like a lot of work because she has it's it's a big thing we're moving, so it's a lot of like complicated things. Like oh, gotta count for that over there. Gotta draw a little over here. Okay. Um, so actually, and then we will do Lude's roll first. So Lude's, um, I want you to make a finesse roll to, um, to see if you can, um, get these locks. So the museum, um, short of the hidden entrances that, uh, most people aren't aware of, um, there are two entrances here. They're kind of like, um, two large double doors flanking the front side of the, um, of the museum. And then there is also a maintenance entrance um, that kind of leads okay. down like a service corridor. Um, okay. Um, so these large double doors, you go and you look and this lock is huge. It's like probably like about as wide as your chest. Um, like a, a large circle. And it's got like these three bars coming across. It almost looks like a safe vault. Okay. Um, but you're looking at the inside of it, so it actually bars it across that way. Um, and so it looks like you would need to know, like, a proper combination in order to open these doors anyways. It's a combination lock. Okay. Yeah. So, I want to use my finesse to break it in the locked position. Yes, that's that's that makes a lot of sense. So, uh, go ahead and give me that finesse roll. Um, it's going to be risky for standard effect. Um, okay. 
because of your special ability where tear does not influence cool your rolls here we go sixer oh, oh man right. um, <laughs> you so had that you, really I, bad I, roll at the start but now it's just six do you see ways, that they glide over it was like a four and then it kind of cocked back over to a six Woo! <laughs> um but yes yeah, so we uh we take a moment and we we see um lutes kind of looking at this lock and then you're like i couldn't be that simple could it and you literally just pull a wire yeah and, and you realize doesn't need this wire yeah well like and what we realize is is that like when you do that and it's not like a like an electronics wire it's like a steel wire and so it thrums as you pull it, and um, you see that that itself controls the mechanism. It's like a winch to pull these okay. bars. So you just snip it. Yeah. And now the bars are stuck. And so you go you and do that on the other door. Um, and uh, you put a broom in on the other one, because there's there isn't really <laughs> a lock on that door. Um, it's a chair. He jams a chair underneath the handle. Yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, you know what I like even better is he uh, he's he he's like okay here we go old fashioned he starts taking out the the little silver coins and putting them into the between the door and the jam so that the door can't open and he's just he's like one and two and <laughs> three and four and five and he's just like loading it up so the door can't open it's it's physically blocked by the coins nice um. Eventually, when you do finish, um, you see Myri is 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 like laying out these um, these things, and like the void salt, as she's like wearing leather gloves to utilize it without cutting herself, um, it's literally carving into the wood. Um, oh, that's fucking cool. Um, and so she's like, you know, like carving like these things in the wood, and then like it's like, um, like chalk, um, like kind of falling off and like filling it up with like this black salt as she goes around, um. You um, take a moment uh, to like hop into the ghost field. Um, I I I would like you guys to do it as a group action to make sure, or you guys have the option to do it as a group action, um, to see if um, you guys can do this properly. Um, yeah, um, I've got three. Is it for a tune? tune. For a tune, yeah. yeah. I have one in a tune. Okay. Um, so, it could be an attune action. It could be a tinker action as well. Can it? Does it have to be one or the other? Or can it be a little of both? Um, mm -hmm. You pick one, and one person acts as the leader. We're gonna do a lot better in attune. Okay. I mean, I also have three in tinker, but like, if you don't have anything, in I tinker, have none in tinker. Yeah. Then yeah. there you go. Okay. All right. So I will do a tune, and then you will back me up on. The other okay. option is is to assist, right? But if you do it as a group action, then you have the potential to crit. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, yeah, we yeah. Only, we also only have one. We only get one stress if we, one of us fails. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll just do group. So, yeah, go ahead and make that um, that group attune action. Uh, Ludes is kind of phasing in and out. No, <laughs> 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 oh, no. Okay. That's that's, twos. that's all twos and a one. Um, oh boy. So Fuck. something, a complication occurs and you end up in a desperate position. Um, we're going to cut over to Albatross. Albatross, after you threw open that door, what did you do? Off. That lightning hook uh, is, is coming. It has come out, and it's 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 going to grab you. Uh, he's going to put his uh, metal arm in the way of it, so it doesn't make contact with his neck. But he'll get dragged with it. Okay. Uh, so yeah, um, that was a powerful NPC acting before you. So you, um, he doesn't get you by the neck. He gets you um, on your metal arm, and Jacob Bridgewater pulls you uh, towards him. Uh, this man, he stands up. Um, Jacob, you are the only person who actually has bothered to find out this man's name. Um, oh, his, yeah. His name is Marcellus Acton. What? Marcellus what? B. Acton. You're acting kind of funny. 
but yes um so marcellus acton um he um he he sees the two of you fighting and he's like is that the man who's come to kill me and um he holds the dolls close to his chest and he storms out into the hallway I was just going to look at um, uh, Jacob and say, Are you sure you want to be doing this? He's getting away. I, man, he will yank on that cord. <laughs> and um, uh, Albatross will stand his ground. Okay. Um, I imagine this seems like a, like a dog catcher's lasso. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, well, like, I mean, we literally described it once as kind of like an electric man catcher. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like it's kind of like um it holds you by like with electricity. So uh while well, you're able to move the arm around, um you were also able to if you wanted to flick it on and like course electricity through. Um that being said, I'm going to allow Albatross to declare what he would like to do next. Or is your goal to fight Jacob Bridgewater to find the man or to escape? To escape. Okay. Um so go ahead and give me a roll to see if you can get out from um, Jacob Bridgewater's grasp. I'm going to roll Prowl. Or mm, mm, I could I, do I think or it, skirm- it could be a skirmish if you're going to kind of like push him back um, or it could be a finesse roll if you want to like twist out and escape. Um, but yeah, pr- I have a, I have a- to be. I have a better idea, but but I'm gonna roll first to see what it is. Well, well, okay, yeah, you can describe it any way you want, but what are you rolling? I'm gonna roll a skirmish. Okay, uh, so because Jacob Bridgewater is established as not as a lover, not a fighter, um, yeah, <laughs> um, it will be uh, risky for standard effect because he's also not a pushover. Okay, as a fail, um. You go to um to push him back and uh uh Jacob um unleashes for the first time his um his arcane spells. Uh oh um what would you uh um, how would you describe it? What what the what is it? Is it lightning? Is it Okay, so here's what happens. He's got the thing wrapped around him and he drags it back and busts the, the window out with the butt end of the uh the, the man catching lasso, uh, laser hook, laser hook, uh, lightning hook, thank you. Uh, the, the lightning hook, back handle, busts out the window behind him. And then as he's holding it there, that's when you see the, the wind that's always blowing his hair kicks up. And then his eyes crackle with energy. And then a lightning bolt strikes down from outside, hits the lightning rod hook, lightning hook handle, sends lightning into him. Um, so because it is an artificial arm, it will only be a level one harm coming your way. Um, actually, no, sorry. It is a level two harm, a level two harm. And only because um, it is an artificial arm that he's got you hooked on. And so, um, the stump itself will actually burn as this, uh, gets, um, heated up. You may resist any consequence in the game. You can pop armor. Uh, things like that if you want to reduce that but otherwise you are suffering a level two harm uh called uh stump burn <laughs> ow my stump um, um actually no i'm gonna pop i'm gonna do this it's a level one harm and you are still captured you're stuck here so you can resist either of those consequences or both That's separate still stuck. Um, I'm going to resist the uh, the harm. Okay. Uh, by uh, by popping armor. By popping armor. Okay. Um. All right. So you um you just pop that armor. Uh. So it's been used. Um. Though it is. Um. Yeah, uh, so you don't have armor anymore, but you are still stuck. Now you can make a resistance roll to um, to twist your way out, anyways. Even though you're getting singed here, 
Um, yeah, I'll do the resistance roll. What do I do for that? Um, it's gonna be. It would be a prowess in this instance. Okay. And uh, any modifiers? Um. No. Um. In this case, you're just gonna make a resistance roll to see how much stress is incoming. Um. You will succeed. Ooh. Uh, Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. So um, as this bolt of lightning kind of comes in from outside, it hits the lightning um, hook and just courses through. You can feel um, like the heat just move up and begin to singe your arm. Um, but you manage to twist out and pull out before it does too much harm. Um, you have a moment where you can dip out into the hallway. Um, you see um, this man is moving uh, down the direction from which you came back towards his own room. Uh, where do you go? Albatross is going to essentially gonna, he's going to run past him, given that he's probably much faster than this guy anyway. Okay. Um. Yeah, so you move past. Uh, Jacob um, rounds the corner. He's also in um we'll say he's in pursuit as well um though this man is not super slow so like it's you barely make it to um past him um jacob is able to catch up as well um you are quick um but not preternaturally fast at this point in time um um i'm going to roll uh to use terrible power Stress to perf uh, okay. take two stress to perf uh, to perform a feat of superhuman strength or speed to run faster than a carriage, break stone with bare hands, yada yada yada. And I will use it with a uh, prowl to be hidden. Okay, and where are you? F like, like, just like. Goal, the goal is to. Where are you going? Uh, yeah. uh, the goal is to make it back into the tunnel system. Okay. And you're going to do that by going through the wrecked room, which you know to be this man's? Okay. Yeah. Um. So go ahead and give me that roll. Okay. Uh, so you I'll take the two stress. Uh, so it's this moment where like you are, um, you, you do like just kind of like burst. Um, there's almost like a like a like a, a palpable feeling as um, all of a sudden uh, Jacob and and this man just see um, Albatross disappear, um, and he is um, able to um, make his way uh, to that room. Uh, the door um, was already open, and so they 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 see that perhaps he stepped into there, um, though it was kind of hard to tell, uh, just given that it is also quite dark in here. Um, the lights are currently not running at full capacity. Um, Jacob Bridgewater, being a powerful NPC, can act prior to characters. And so in response to this, um, I'm going to ask Adam, would Jacob Bridgewater care to bring this man along with them when he does? What so, he, does? Uh, he knows where one of the one of the possible targets is and he doesn't know where the other is is that correct yes but um i think he went that way i know he went that way we would both throw we both went the same direction i ran yeah. past him yeah He's yeah so, but you but i yeah. know i know where one guy is and i think i know where the other guy is yes i guess i just want to make sure do you care about this other man at all He's going to go after Albatross. Okay. Um, Jacob Bridgewater pulls out an object known as a ghost key. I got that uh, checked off already. Yeah. Um, and he um, he steps right into the ghost field and um, um, dons his fine spirit mask. Um, that checked off too. Yep. It's okay. He's acting as an NPC right now, so they don't have item loadouts. But well, there, there are I plan for him, so yeah, fine. Yeah. <laughs> but um, Albatross, um, you make your way into the into the hallway, and you um, 
you are there you take a moment to perhaps look around um you've gone through the mirror um i'm assuming you opened it up and walked in as opposed to like jumping through and breaking it yeah yeah uh so you close the mirror behind you and as you're walking down the hallway uh thinking of what to do next um the 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 mirror you kind of hear the sound of like that glass sliding once again and the man steps into the hallway um and he cannot see you but you can kind of sense and see him okay well albatross isn't going to stay too like uh, really that long to figure out what's going to happen next he's going to leave this man to his fate okay or at least that's what he's assuming was going to happen and he's just going to book it okay um and- as you turn around, uh, Jacob Bridgewater is standing in front of you. He appears from within the ghost zone. And that is his action. So he has he has found you. Because whispers can do that. Jacob, look, he's right there. You could take him. I don't care. He's an easy target. You have to kill him, right? I don't have to. He was an option. You're getting in the way of the organization. We, the, we need to do this. We need to get back to the heart. Myri is waiting for me for the ritual. You are wasting our time. It is not just mine. My question to you is, Adam, could Jacob Bridgewater at this point in time be reasoned with? I think he's guys. I, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. Um... Jacob disappears once again. And um, what we see, um, like we at home see, um, is that Jacob is standing and and following um, Albatross to perhaps learn a little bit more about what he's even here for, what he's trying to do. Um, Standing in the ghost field, um, you see that he disappears as Albatross makes his way back to the museum to inform the others that he was not able to retrieve the man and to perhaps make a plan. Um, as you step in and you're talking to Myri and you're talking to... Um, what's his name? Um, to Ludes. Um, you're speaking with Myri and Ludes um, is when Jacob reappears. Uh, a bolt of lightning comes your way. Incoming is a level two harm. Oh. At Albatross? At Albatross. As Albatross is standing on the outskirts of this. Uh, so first off, um, we can make a resistance roll to lower that. Um, so yeah, yeah, first things first, like if you want to resist that consequence, otherwise you're going to have a level two harm come. Albatross is going to say, fine, put his arms out to show he meant no harm to to Jacob and that he's wasting his time and he's going to take the hit. Okay. Oh, fuck. Um, so a level two harm, um, hits you across the chest as this like bolt of lightning kind of comes out and Jacob um, and uh, like is it comes walking towards you wind billowing everywhere um, the two like you fall into the into the glyphs as Myri is is completing it and Jacob enters with you the failure is twofold as as you kind of hit the ground just a small amount of blood um from albatross's like um like arm as it scrapes against this wood and against the void salt on the wood um begins to fill this thing and it is incredibly loud as the heart 
um, begins to beat faster and louder to the point where glass is shattering and things are falling off of the shelves. And there is commotion outside the doors. Oh, <laughs> oh man. That's um, from the failure um, from Myri and, uh, and Lude's Atuna. Yeah. Uh, so it's in this moment that um, as you step inside, Jacob, um, you go to turn around and like, like you you kind of look out, um, you and you realize that like you and um, and Albatross at this point in time are in the ghost field as you step into this, as he has has he has inadvertently activated the spell. Is, I thought the ghost field he couldn't like. I guess there's you, a pocket around with this area, right? Yeah, you, so like, yeah, but like we're in it. When you step, like it gets skipped, but we're like inside of the thing that gets okay. skipped. Yeah, and so basically, this is like a one-on-one. You two are gonna fight to the death right now. Fuck. And um, yeah, that's why I was asking if you wanted to bring the guy, because now, if someone's gonna die, it's gonna be one one of the two. And Albatross just took a level two harm, saying he like fine. You want to waste your time by all means. That's fair. Um, but yes, you and Jacob uh, stand here. Um, you can see and feel like eyes of like spirits watching as this um, occurs. Um, like just like an overwhelming sense of emotions. Um, Myri and Ludes, um, you can see them standing there. Um, though um they just seem to be kind of like um taking a moment um you can you can hear and feel like this like this shaking going on um across the city um the um the the sermon that they is holding as part of his ritual um has begun Albatross, you have a moment to react. What do you do? I, I'm just going to say this. I am 100% serious. I think Jacob or Albatross, one of you is going to die. Out. I'm totally okay with it. I know that Albatross will probably come out on top because he is much more suited to killing, but we will see. I don't know, but I've got I got the Tempest thing. It says use lightning as a weapon. I mean, that's that's a tune rolls, and those are three pips, man. Yeah, but I have three pips for everything, too. Yeah, that's but there. still, I don't have a level two wound. You better give him one. Go ahead. I, I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm you. Yeah. Um... I'm gonna have fun with this. Okay, so Albatross is gonna start pushing it. I have uh, what's the level two wound that I have again, by the way? Pardon? What's the level two wound that I have again? Um, this one will be called uh, this one will be called lightning strike, or just call it lightning. Um, I'm assuming you took it right to the chest, and so there's yeah. like a bur- like there's literally like a hole in your chest. Um, not through you, but like into you. The wound. Is and he took that. Wi- and he took that willingly. And now he's just staring at you. He's going to go for it. Uh, he's Burst going to. Uh, absolutely no. no. Right in the titty. This isn't. This isn't Lutz. <laughs> where he you it's shoot him right with one light. It's always where you shoot him with lightning bolt, and he's like burn off like five fucking nipples at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. Uh, but he's. Um. It, um, uh, two things are going to happen. He's going to push himself, and he's going to use his ability, um, terrible power. I only have three pips of stress. This would require four. So you're going to go over the tap. Yeah. Okay. So depending on how this goes, this is it. this is this isn't just albatross you're facing now. Okay. I don't know what that means, but... So, um, you dig in deep. Um, If if anything, 
Albatross's um, uh, motion to start moving to the beat of the heart. Yeah. Um, Jacob, you can hear too this this heart um, like that's beating so loudly in your head, um, almost driving you um, like further. Don't say insane, because you know. <laughs> oh. Already there, baby. No, but um, Albatross moves and for a moment um, you recognize him not as the man that you've seen but as Serana herself um, I killed that bitch once and Albatross you um, as you push yourself um, that that little window through your hand it grows and your entire right arm the good arm um, turns like to crystalline like quartz and the end of your hand just breaks off and you lean forward to us and to impale him with your broken hand. Um, go ahead and make your roll. Give yourself. Um, so it is going to be um, is going to be desperate for great effect. And I uh, would that include the plus? Because I, I rolled up the push to do the one plus one, and then I'm doing the um, uh, the ability uh, for the great feat. Yeah, yeah. The great effect is as high as you can go. Desperate is it is desperate because um the stakes are incredibly high right here but well, i'm saying is the great effect happening because i pushed myself or is it going to be already happening um, separately it would have already happened separately um, okay so so i'm adding a plus one to my roll yes All right Let's see where this goes whoa okay Oh, yeah. Um, oh, no. So as you go to stab um, at him, uh, Jacob Jacob goes to move out of the way, and he puts up, like, this wall, and he just kind of smashes his hands together, and, like, three separate bolts of lightning just pierce through your heart. And you have an incoming level four harm, which is fatal. You may... Roll to resist, if you would like, to reduce that to sure. A- uh, I like I'm, that's not even Albatross responding at that point, but it'll resist. Okay, uh, go ahead and give me a resolve resistance roll to see if you can will your heart to continue beating. Oh, Am I- <laughs> oh what the fuck? Um, not even sweating it. <laughs> So you are traumatized. However, um, what that actually ends up looking like is like you will become, you are no longer human. And after this scene, Albatross, as we know him now, is out of the game. Um, but up, we, will, baby. we will allow this to play out. And so... Um, you have one level three harm. Another level three harm will prove fatal. You may attempt another roll. Uh, what would it be in this case? Uh, whatever Resolve? you describe. No, no, no. Um, you can oh, make attacking. an action roll to attack Jacob. Oh. Mm. He's going to turn around and strike again with the same arm. Okay. As you try to do it, Jacob's going to be like, don't fight it. Don't fight it. That's Not for what you believe in. Make things right. Once in your damn filthy life, you're gonna do something that matters. Something right. You can help those people. Just die. And then you can punch him in the face. Yeah, go ahead and make that attack. He's going to respond, saying, My brother is those people. And then he'll go for the strike. All right. Uh, So go ahead. I'm still. Oh, buddy. Oh, man. You got nothing on this. Why is he suing? Like, it's crazy. I am so sorry, Dio. This is the story. This is. Yeah. This is how characters die. 
And oh. I am so sorry, Dio. But Jacob Bridgewater, um, as you go to swing, he um, he takes a moment and he prays. He just closes. His eyes. He doesn't pray, but he like, what? How would Albert? How would Jacob Bridgewater? Like, how much? How determined is he that he is protected and chosen in this moment? Oh, uh, he knows. And so Jacob does what Albatross tried to do, which is he stands there and he knows that no harm is going to come his way. And he doesn't do a thing. And as you go to pierce um, Jacob Bridgewater, the robe falls to the ground empty. And Jacob Bridgewater is gone. It's fucking full of Toby You struck him down. He's more powerful than he could ever be. I fucking hate it. <laughs> and when you whip, and when you whip around, you see like a tall, like an impossibly tall figure wearing a large yellow robe. Oh no! And he oh no! Grabs your head, drives his long, spindly, wooden fingers through your eyeballs, and pulls your skull. In twain. Oh no, that is not what I thought was gonna happen. <laughs> Jesus, is that you? <laughs> oh fuck. I was not expecting Albatross to lose that fight. I'm gonna be totally honest. No, not at all. No. Not at all. I was Do like, you know? I have zero in skirmish. I have one in hunt. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, but that happened. And, um, Ludes and Myrie, you can see glimpses of this within it. Um, like as like this space and it begins to react and like, there's like this orb swirling, um, you see glimpses of like Albatross and Jacob fighting. And then you see for just a moment, like this tall figure and you see, um, just the moment that Albatross perishes. Um, no. as his blood spills, like from these long wooden fingers, the figure looks directly to Ludes and nods. Oh, the hell! And then <laughs> the fi- and then it's like um, kind of like almost like someone changed the channel. There's like a swirl of like air, and you can't see it anymore. You feel the ground underneath you shake and shudder. And it's starting to get weird in here. Um, Myrie, you look up yeah. um, at the ceiling and you can see that the ceiling is convulsing and um, like almost beginning to like pour like a liquid down. Um, you realize that you may not want to be in here when this building leaves. Yeah. <laughs> uh, by the way, the spirit hawk is still with you. It is now very, very sad. It is. <laughs> it tells you. <laughs> I'm like, sad. <laughs> Squaw, I'm sad. Squaw. If anything, it sits on Lude's um, uh, shoulder and, and it just kind of like perches and puts its head down. But yes, um, my reludes and the saddest hawk in the world. What do you... His name is Sad Hawk. That's actually not a terrible name. It's a pretty fucking rad name. <laughs> sad Hawk. You gotta make that into an album cover. The Hawk Which Grieves. <laughs> oh, that's pretty fucking metal. Oh, yeah? It's my buddy Sad Hawk. Fuck me. Um, uh, honestly. I mean, yeah, I think we're both it, right it, for a minute. It, we're both just like, what the fuck just happened? Oh, shit. Like, Albatross's dead body is just there now? Um, yeah. Or is he still in the ghost? Oh. Yeah, you no skull. You see that the. <laughs> um, you see that he, in fact, does not have a skull. Um,. Um, though, um, yeah, like as things begin to settle down and like the, the void salt, um, 
has turned like dyed fully red and is like glowing with energy. Um, Ludes, the heart seems pleased. Um, but yes, you can do right. anything you want. <laughs> Guys, let's just sit down, have a nice like party with Jake I want with Albatross's bed. So drunk. Guys, All right, so you can do anything let's just you want. This <laughs> I mean, like, right now, Myri's just, like, in fucking shock, staring down at Albatross's body. What? what the hell is that? What is happening? He wasn't supposed to die! She, she like, runs over him, like, 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 she's, is like, Is this part of your plane? Like, what the hell is no, going on? No, he was not supposed to die! It, why don't, why don't you include me in the plans? This guy, Every this time. wasn't part of the plan! It, what, if I was included in the plans, this wouldn't have happened, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. What the hell do we do? What the hell do we do? I mean, now, now do we have the problems that we already have, but I mean, he's making a bunch of noise, and there's all this stuff going on, and his heart, this heart keeps fucking calling me, and it looks really good. And the crow and, starts and to flap dead, the... and starts to tug on your uh, on Luz's coat and starts flying towards the exit. Yeah, is it is the did I finish the thing? Ah, uh, yes, your part okay. of this is done. This museum is going to move. We okay. gotta get out of here. We gotta get out of here. I mean, the, the, the spirit wardens are gonna come. Yes, I, yes, we're getting this. the fuck out of here. I'm I, sorry. I, I, I'm sorry, I Albatross. I broke but... the locks on the doors. We can't we get have out the secret exits. The secret exits? I blocked it up with what all the coins. No, no, no. You blocked the maintenance corridor, but um, oh. the the way you came is still open. So. Oh, never mind then. I blocked up something <laughs> else with the coins. I don't even know what it was. <laughs> 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 it's like, oh, I'm just like, don't. Oh, you're right, like you're right, you're right. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's go. Let's go. We gotta get out of here. We gotta get out of here. I, 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 I guess uh, Sadbird, come on with us. Uh, oh, the, the, the Sadbird's already by the secret exit, scrawling at you guys to go. Yeah. Running. I hate that thing. All right, let's get out of here. I gotta... Uh, that heart, though. We gotta bring the heart with us, don't we? It's going! That's why everything's going fucking with. weird. It's going! It's gotta come with... Don't right, fucking... Sorry. I'm sorry. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And, uh, so Ludes is going to jump in the tunnels. Yeah. And, uh, Myri and Ludes, um, they leave Albatross behind. As you guys um, enter into the hallway, um, there's like dust coming from like the caulking in between these stones as like the, the, like the whole building is like shaking in time <laughs> with the beating of the heart. Um, you make your way out um, um, the way once you came. Um, you see the same patrolman from earlier as you're about to exit the building. He sees you. He looks at you. I got the bird. I got him. We're gonna get out of here. <laughs> and, um, the look of, like, pure horror on his face and, like, just, like, uncertainty about what's happening. He looks at you and he knows you're not supposed to be here. But he just goes the other way. Yeah, I mean, like, what the hell are you gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> um and so you do make your way out um yeah um Ludes you um you had a moment in the hallways where you had to wait for Myri uh she was a little bit slow to get to catch up um but you do make uh, I, I hope she can make it out of there I mean she doesn't have the dark side vision goggles the, 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 the night stumbling. vision thing where I can touch her face <laughs> when she doesn't see me yeah. but uh okay. you do you do make your way out of the Ministry of Preservation um, you return to wherever you're going, but at some point, you go to check. Um, underneath, by the waters, you open up. Um, we'll say it's the fourth. It's the door completely, exactly opposite the one to the library, uh, the underground library. You go inside, and it is dead silent. It is dark. You light a lamp. You walk through the museum. The museum is there in its entirety. But the heart is not. What the fuck? And uh, we'll allow CJ to to tell you why. But you better you better have <laughs> some real good explanation for this because what the fuck? We just a man died. All right, sir. Go on, go on, go on. <laughs> And make it good. Make it real fucking good. <laughs> if, I did, like, if this costs like flashback energy, that's fine. I'll take that stress for it. Um, but we see, Myri's the one who's always making the glyphs. 
So when she yeah. was making these glyphs in the in this hall, I'm sure people coming in checking on her, helping out a little. But near the end, when no one else is around, she's finishing up. She looks down at a glyph here or there, and she scuffs it up. What? She goes in. She we do the whole. You go through the the heist. Um. I'm sorry, Aaron. Are are you, are you saying that the heart didn't leave, or can I say it, it went somewhere else? What? Um. At a cost of three stress, I can I will let you for for one stress, the heart can stay. For three stress, it can go anywhere else in the city. You. Yeah. Okay. Um. So as you go to like uh, find the fruit of your spoils, specifically the heart of Kotar, it is not there. Um, we see Ve, um, in the aftermath of the ritual itself, um, his own heart actually stopped beating as a result of it for just a moment. Oh, um, we see Drillbit, um sweeping the floors of the library and Daniel Derevisa is um got his nose in a book and there's just a moment where something feels wrong he looks up ludes like obviously you can feel it um but it seems that everyone who has a connection to this um to this thing they feel it um Lechusa one of your spirits has gone rogue. Um, many of them have, but we're following one in particular. Over in a corner of six towers, underneath an old abandoned store, there's a long hallway that leads down to a chamber that Albatross has been inside before. Um, in fact, I believe Ludes and Myrie and Jacob Bridgewater have also been down there. Um, there, a meeting, um, shy a couple of people, um, take place in a, with a bunch of men in red robes, and um, they discuss angrily about what they're going to do with the people that they have um, given um, ample opportunity to hand over the artifacts, when suddenly the heart just appears floating. You just sent it to table. him? And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of tonight's session. We will. We will just take a moment to uh, let that settle. Don't forget to toodaloo. Say goodnight. Yeah, no, I gotta say goodnight. Sorry, that was just really, really heavy. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> yeah. um well thank you ladies and gentlemen for listening um i hope you all have a good night good afternoon good morning whatever time it is where you are and uh we'll see you next time to da blue <laughs> 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 <laughs>